when my father was killed, I, the man that uh, was in the accident with my father reached out to me uh, two weeks ago and wants wow. to sit down and have lunch. I guess you could call us townies. We, yeah. <laughs> you know, big eyeball staring at me. Wow. Like it startled me. It looked like a mini pterodactyl or something <laughs> like. But I've had balloons again. <laughs> or maybe that shows our age too. Like all yeah. of a sudden, we're awesome. We're bird watchers. <laughs> Oh no, I have I haven't looked at it in that light. <laughs> I don't have a book yet. I don't have right. like a bird watching book yet. I, I'm so. like, you know, when people ask me why I know God is real or why I think God is real, moments like that, indisputable. Yeah. I, that's a perfect word. Like the meditative part is the stillness to hear the answers. Mm. So the the Buddhist foundation kind of set the groundwork for sitting still. All right. So yeah, this is a uh... You're here for the first of the new mic setup. So nice. I'm a little interested to see how this goes. But um but yeah, so you said that that how many episodes did you say? A hundred? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh so I read a thing that or may, maybe I heard about it. Maybe I heard somebody talking about it. Was um there's like over two million podcasts. Yeah. Right? Like out there. Everybody has a podcast. Yeah. yeah. But it significantly drops after three episodes because so many quit after three episodes. So like <clears throat> it was like if we get to three episodes, which technically this would be the episode three, if you don't count my kids as episodes, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so we're already like I'm already like in the top like 25 percent or something like right. that of podcast if I get to episode four. Yeah. <clears throat> and then if we get to episode 11. Because then there's another big drop off after ten episodes, so if you got to a hundred, you were like already in that top like five percent yeah. of podcast. Yeah. So one of the platforms we <clears> use <throat> gave us stats, and we were in the top five. Yeah, that's after, awesome. After like fifty episodes or something. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. So <clears throat> I haven't put this on um because there's a way to pull off the um what is it the RSS feed or something like that mm -hmm. where you just pull the audio and put that on the different like podcasting platforms yeah i haven't done that yet i've just focused mostly on um youtube but uh probably someday mm -hmm. maybe soon i don't know start venturing into that but but like i was telling you when somebody asked me like how to get started it was like you literally have to take it one step at a time because all of this like looking at all of this from zero like it seemed so overwhelming oh, to have yeah. to like you know because as i'm digging into it i'm like oh, okay i need this too oh now i need this too and then even like just like the dumb little connections that allow me to have like multiple things right. plugged into my computer at one time like so it was just like constantly like building it up and i'm right. still not even done i've got two lights here i probably need to have maybe two more um but yeah the uh just getting from zero to record <laughs> was a long, long process journey, huh? yeah that, that's why people only make three episodes <laughs> right but then what do you do with all those equipment like, exactly oh, <laughs> well that was part of the uh then mm -hmm. that there like as i started gathering it and the price tag kept getting up and like this is an investment right um it was uh it it, it like there was some pressure you know like you got to keep you got to do it now like there's no backing out right. like <laughs> i mean i guess i could sell all this stuff but yeah so, yeah was, loss yeah you got quite a setup here man yeah exactly so and i wanted to do it um right as right as i could being right. as amateur as i was um i didn't want to just throw up my iphone and start doing it that way like that didn't seem the right way to do it uh, trying to learn uh, like wanting to do it with excellence but as excellent as as, as what was to my right. level was you know um so that's kind of the uh kind of the purpose for all this stuff. Did you guys have one of these roadcasters or what were you recording? We into? were very simple and, and very amateur. We didn't do the video, so that made it a lot mm -hmm. easier. We just had mics that plugged directly into a soundboard that was like probably a, a quarter of the size of yours. Yeah. And there was like four programmable sounds. We had an intro and outro button and just recorded. Yeah. So yeah sometimes that's all it takes <clears throat> yeah i mean that's what got got us started got us to 100 episodes so yeah that's awesome yeah. man so you're like a i brought in a vet today then 
I podcasting that. vet. I guess maybe. <laughs> uh, Eric did a lot of the editing, so shout out to to Eric for all the yeah. leg work behind the scenes. But I just kind of showed up and talked. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of a mine and Jeff's relationship right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he just shows up. Yeah, <laughs> he just shows up and talks. So I think he's good with that uh, that part of it. Right. Which the uh, the editing is like. <clears throat> what I found so far, because I've been learning a lot too, pretty pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. The learning curve is, I guess, the learning curve is kind of slow. Like it seems, it's one of the again, it's one of those things when, like, all this starting from zero seemed like a big task. Mm-hmm. Editing seems like that too. Um, I started with a pretty simple program right now, but but it's like getting me down here to edit is the most difficult part. Once I'm get in it and I'm like doing it, I don't want to leave. You know, Candace right. will be like, when are you going to be done? I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I could be down here for another two hours. Like, so it's like once I get in it, I'm enjoying it. I like it. I like trying out new ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really fun figuring out like things that I didn't know how to do. And you're like, oh, I wonder how you do this. And you kind of look up some things and you put, and then it comes together and you're like, yes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the uh, on Riker's episode, I, I thought it would be cool because. Um, we're we're a WWE family. Yeah. Like we we got into it last year. It's kind of crazy how that happened, but um so Seth Rollins uh is a WWE wrestler. I don't know if you guys watch nah. it at all, but uh Seth Rollins is a WWE wrestler and his uh intro music starts with this guy screaming burn it down. <laughs> and then it's like you know, it goes into this like whole like heavy metal thing. And um so I ended the show with Riker just doing that like i just thought it would be funny to like end it that way yeah and then as i'm editing and i'm like this would be kind of cool to um like have the actual intro in like maybe just a few seconds of it because i didn't want to get copyrighted right (laughs) but uh so i was like man how do i get it in like how do i find it how do i get it in here so i figured out how to record it bluetooth from my phone into the roadcaster into garage band which is the free software that's on the mac Uh, and then pulled it out of GarageBand, put it into CapCut, which is what I've been using. Um, it's like a beginner, basically. They have like a free version yeah. for beginners. Threw it in there, and it like, it worked. And I literally like jumped yes. up, and I was like, it worked. <laughs> it was so good. Nice, Candace man. thought I was such a dork. but <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, so. <clears throat> well, thanks for coming, dude. Yeah, thanks Especially, for having me. Especially uh, like early in the morning. and. Um, I guess the coffee helps with that a little bit, but yeah, I'm uh, an early riser. So yeah, yeah, I got but, a big day ahead of me. Yeah. What yeah. are going on after this man? So, um, just a background. I know, you know, the background, but when my father was killed, I, the man that, uh, was in the accident with my father reached out to me, uh, two weeks ago and wants wow. to sit down and have lunch. Oh my so goodness. That's today. So you're going to lunch today after this, after this yeah, with that guy. Yeah wow dude yeah and even uh, a more beautiful synchronicity in that was <clears throat> at church that week that he reached out to me the message was forgiveness it's like oh man yeah. god <laughs> god, god works it right continues to to illuminate my path and it, it's just dude, there's no is... coincidence that i'm sitting here yeah. before i go to that lunch with somebody that's helped my help me in my understanding in my walk with god so dude that is awesome right right that is so awesome yeah i'm, I'm gonna have to have you come back now so you can tell us how the lunch yeah, went. Man, I, i'll come back all the time man <laughs> dude that is man i don't even know where to go from here that's like way exciting yeah i don't know if you want to tell a little bit of like the story yeah sure um so in 2015 my father was in an automobile accident and he was hit by a semi truck mm. um, out by the Jeremiah Morrow Bridge. Killed him instantly, and um, so was there uh, like alcohol and drugs involved, or uh, was it just a legitimate not, like? Not sure. Mm. Uh, so my dad was at a standstill in traffic, and the semi hit him going sixty three miles an hour. So oh, wow. there was some kind of some kind of negligence or something yeah. that, that happened. And we're not really sure. We never really got the answers that we were looking for. And hopefully today, you know, I get, a, I have a chance to yeah. be like, Hey, you know what happened? Man? Right. You know, cause with legal suit and a civil suit that, that followed, 
we never really got the answers and we settled out of court with the the civil suit yeah uh so today hopefully you can get that answer but um are you prepared for the answer <clears throat> uh yeah i think so you know in in 2018 when i really started my my walk with god and, and better understanding something greater outside of myself because up until that point i was really an eighth I don't know if I would say I was an atheist, but I didn't really have a relationship with God at all. Yeah, you know, I, maybe agnostic. Yeah, like you thought perhaps. there might be something bigger, but not really sure what it was. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I never really put much thought into it, honestly. Yeah. And um, you know, my dad was always the one that can like tried to convince me like you need to develop a relationship, you need to develop a relationship, and and you know it's it's tragic, but it's also beautiful in retrospect that he was the one that brought me to God in his passing you know yeah so um <clears throat> yeah i remember talking about that with you before about yeah. how that connection with your dad and um and how like how how glad he would be that something like that event would help lead you to where you are today with god right like we talked about your dad being like like he would be really the catalyst yeah. yeah he would be like so like thrilled with that oh my goodness yeah yeah you know he's smiling and having yeah. like ah and so <clears throat> anyways 2018 i started my journey and i made a forgiveness video you know i started diving into meditation and, and different things and i had moved on from the accident but it it had come to me that i hadn't forgiven david mm. so i was still carrying that subconscious weight and the negativity and the hatred you know and, yeah and when when the trial came i had an opportunity to speak on behalf of my family mm. <clears throat> and i said some really hateful things uh you know wish that it would haunt him at night and wow. that my that my sister won't get to walk down the aisle with her father because i put a lot of heavy stuff on him yeah and he was already carrying that burden of of the accident you know right so today will be a, a wonderful opportunity for me to apologize and wow. ask for forgiveness as well you know? yeah so it, it works both ways and um forgiving myself you know working on forgiving myself for that because sure. i was in such a devastated state so yeah that hatred that i had built up from a lot of things in my life not just that incident but all that stuff kind of poured into my message in the court and wow um in retrospect it's it is what it is but it's also stuff that i wasn't proud of now yeah. so yeah and that's it's 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 like i don't know it's crazy to think to me like of you also recognizing and taking accountability for something you want to apologize for yeah. in that type of type of thing so mm -hmm. and that's that is going to be an awesome lunch yeah where are you guys meeting at uh, broadway barrel house oh, okay yeah is he is he from the area i mean you don't have to tell me much about him i guess <clears throat> but is he local to the area like he's from dayton okay so this is like the middle yeah like meeting spot yeah so we you. had set this uh, a couple weeks prior or um i think it was last weekend and he got sick and he had to cancel so um it just kind of worked out that these i was in lebanon yeah and we were meeting at the broadway barrel house so that's cool yeah so we can uh so maybe maybe this can just like help you work through your thoughts too even before you go yeah go into the into the lunch absolutely um man at, le at least open that up you know i i, I sat with I've, I've sat with it for a couple weeks now and what am i going to say yeah how am i going to feel trying to tap into that so it doesn't catch me by surprise you know yeah um and i i really feel at peace with it to be honest with you man yeah, yeah. that's awesome is there a little bit of like excitement absolutely yeah and, and so there is excitement but it, it feels weird to say that i'm excited yeah, yeah. about it so i've kind of just kind of kept that to myself because yeah. he's like are you nervous I'm like i don't know what nervous is i'm like eager excited yeah 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 no i get it like there's <laughs> things about um it, it sometimes people think of anxiousness as like a negative thing but that's mm -hmm. not always i don't think that's always what it is not always right. like i think it's just it's just, like you said it's, it's, i think sometimes eagerness and anxious can be kind of like i mean i don't know maybe if we look up the definitions they're actually different but mm -hmm. it just seems like like there can be an eagerness connected to being anxious right. about something and it not be a negative anxiety right 
right? Because a lot sometimes people think of anxious being anxious about something. There's because I guess there can be a connection to anxiety too, and that would be it's like the light and the dark of it. Yeah, right? I could see that the excited energy. Yeah, like but I totally get like how you're like you might even feel like a little like pumped up. I am. You know, I like, really am. Like, man, this is like uh, nine years mm -hmm. of coming to this one moment right you know mm -hmm. um which is kind of cool sometimes i think well i guess all the time when you when you realize it it's all the time how god nine years of things that god has brought together right for you and for him because he loves you both into this one moment yeah. like nine years worth of things are all going to come together into this one moment between the two of you so that's cool yeah i'm i'm very excited brother yeah so yeah, this is a big day, dude. It is, man. It really <laughs> yeah, is. Coming here for a podcast, and then, mm -hmm. uh, and then, wow, that kind of lunch, man. That's wild. Well, that's cool, man. I, I'm, I'm excited for you, and uh, and like you said too, like it's cool. It's cool that that God allowed me to be a part of that, you know, with you in some way. Like, I'm thankful for those for those opportunities that He gives me. So. Um, so how things have been then like because it's been like what like november i think was when we last got together it hasn't been, been that long it's really? been a few months dude i know wow. it goes by so quick and then i'm like you know i haven't talked to chad in a while i need to reach out to him yeah um which i guess because of scheduling stuff like both having small kids yeah because so i probably reached out to you probably like a month ago mm -hmm. and so like before you could actually before we could actually get together it took like you know a month even after that right um but uh but yeah so like what's oh you know what i was thinking about too that i wanted to ask you so, was um uh i just was curious like i don't think i've ever asked you why you chose to live in it, it's loveland right is that mm -hmm. technically loveland yeah um like because you kind of set up roots there now yeah so yeah, i just was like kind of interested i'm like man, i've never asked him about like why loveland like what was it about loveland or how did that come together that that you decided to live there yeah so <clears throat> i have a daughter with my high school sweetheart mm. aubrey you know april baroski the baroskis oh, Aaron yeah. was in your grade oh no aaron was um i know who you're talking about i think i think candace graduated with a baroski yeah i think that she was a cheerleader with, right with aaron yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. april was a i was 2002 baloney. candace was 03 okay yeah yeah so Aaron i was a year graduated oh three. okay okay so um had a had my daughter with april and april got married and moved to milford uh, so my i when i had my daughter the three days of the week i was driving her back and forth to school to milford yeah, from tough. lebanon and when she would have cheerleading practice we'd go sit and eat at a restaurant she'd do her homework at a restaurant just because so you didn't have to come all the way back and then all the way down right yeah that so makes sense. It, it was um it was just too much of a drive so my wife and i started looking at houses in this area and then we settled it's a loveland address but milford school district so, oh okay yep oh well that makes perfect sense then yeah <laughs> yeah i figured there was a <clears throat> there was a practical reason behind it yeah um and then now you have a son i do so he'll be in milford schools then too he is in milford schools he's in second grade so yeah that's cool yep maybe for now we we've been talking about downsizing oh really <laughs> yeah we um aubrey is going to travel i believe once she is finished with school is she a senior she is she graduated Dude, that's wild i know right um she graduated we're not supposed to be old months. enough to have <laughs> to be able to have someone that's right? going to graduate high school right and you know when i tell people they're like what how yeah. do you have somebody I'm like, age well yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Um, so, uh, if she travels and, and decides to do her own thing, we may downsize because I mean, in retrospect, I probably would have never bought the house we bought. Yeah. Um, just because I've developed a kind of a minimalist attitude and we have so much stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot yeah. clean and a lot of yard to take care of. And it's, you know, I'm grateful, you right. know, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't mind downsizing. Yeah. <laughs> some of the responsibilities <laughs> yeah i think sometimes we we um think that that's like the stuff that we want yeah you know and then i had that same realization too where um i want to the things the things that come into my life 
I want to I want it to make my life simple, mm -hmm. not easy, right? But simple, um, because they can be two different things. And that was something I actually discovered when I went down to Mexico on a missions trip um, last year. I thought about this because life down there was so simple. Mm -hmm. Now it wasn't easy by our standards by any means, but there was something about it just being simple mm -hmm. that was really cool. And so like I've had that same kind of mindset started to like kind of think about those things like, like, man, like, like I, I am grateful for the stuff for all the stuff, but then it just like, I realized that it's just stuff, right? You know? And it's like, what is it actually is, is the stuff actually bringing on more stress and more like things that I have to think about? Mm -hmm. Like maybe the stuff isn't as good as I, right. <laughs> as I thought it was. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm right there with you on now. We do love this neighborhood. Yeah. So it's hard to um, you know, think about if we and we love the Lebanon community. Mm -hmm. Like we've never, I guess you could call us townies. We've yeah. <laughs> you know, we've I've lived here my whole life. I lived probably a mile and a half from this very spot, like just across the main street there in yeah. the other neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like almost directly, like if we looked. So like if you walked out my back door and look straight across, like the fairgrounds are kind of on the other side of the creek and yeah. on the other side of the woods and stuff. And if you keep going like straight ahead, like that's where my house is basically, like a mile yeah. and a half, like from this spot, probably. Nice. Um, so always been in Lebanon, graduated from Lebanon, worked in Lebanon. We just never found a reason to leave and uh and to try to move now. Oh, like it would be tough rooted yeah because yeah, because we are really rooted here candace couldn't be away from her mom yeah or her sister like they're so tight she anytime we talk about moving she was like you know or we joke about moving she would say things like you know okay well where's mom gonna live <laughs> you know <Right>. like <laughs> uh, all sweet yeah exactly <laughs> um so uh so we're pretty planted here in this house um you know the kids like this house although Riker complains about not having any other like really kids no, yeah. in like our vicinity like there's a there's kids like streets over and stuff but um that's probably the one thing I guess that he misses is not having kids to interact with on a normal basis um but other than that we love this spot like I was showing it to you when you first got here just how nice it is how it's Beautiful. to be close to all the amenities of being in a city mm -hmm but still have like some seclusion and you know we saw one time we had a wild turkey walk through our our backyard nice um uh we've seen uh there's been a fox back there before we've seen you know possums every once in a while at night you'll see them running around um i like looking at hawks and stuff too i do too sometimes they'll be you know i'll hear them screeching and i'll be like oh where's he at mm -hmm. um there was actually a hawk nest uh in our neighbor's really? tree yeah Nice. Um, there, there were smaller species of hawk. They weren't, they weren't the um, what's the bigger one? The red tail. The red tails. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a red tail. It was um a different one, kind of a little bit smaller. But their nest was still pretty big. I mean, it was like you know pretty big around. So that was fun to watch them bring food and stuff to Swooped it out and grab little rodents. Yeah, yeah. One time, like he had, uh, it flew in and had a snake. Oh, that's you know, cool. it had a snake and dropped it in the nest and and the the little babies were going nuts we had a we had like a robin's nest or something that was real close to its nest mm -hmm. um and it landed down on top of it mm -hmm. grabbed up a baby robin just like savage and took it like yeah. and then they were only like 50 feet apart right and it was just like oh that's an easy hey, meal right. <laughs> i was like oh uh, i bet they're moving yeah exactly yeah that <laughs> robin was like we're out we got tons of squirrels though but <clears throat> Yeah, I'm a big uh, fan of birds of like predator birds. Yeah, we have a we have quite a few owls. I haven't got to I see one. Owls. I've heard them. Yeah, we'll hear them out out at night every once in a while, but um, I've never seen one, yeah. and I've really wanted to see one nearby. Yeah, um, yeah, owls are cool. What about um, we've got these uh, giant, uh, what are they called? Pelleated woodpeckers. Oh really? Yeah, That's and they're cool. like the size of like a crow. Really? Wow. They're huge, and it's actually. Um, <laughs> I saw one one time in our bedroom window. It was like, 
like pecking at the window and I opened up the the thing and I mean like I said it's you know it's big eyeball staring at me wow. like it startled me it looked like a mini pterodactyl or something <laughs> like I was like what in the world and it flew off and so I looked it up I'm like what in the world was that and it's actually do you remember Woody the Woodpecker yeah. cartoon it's actually what Woody the Woodpecker is was like created after really I pelliated I think is how you say it P-E-L um that's we can do cool. this this might be fun Anybody that doesn't care about uh, woodpeckers can skip ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they actually made a movie that I've I've watched several times with my son. It's a pretty cute little movie. The bird's animated, but it's a it's an actual movie. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I can uh, hold on. I want to let me share window. Let's try that. There we go. Yeah. Now you can't see it yet. So that's one of the things I need to add is a little TV over there. Oh, to see so what that screen sharing. So that I can bring it up as like another another um <clears throat> thing. So I don't know if you want to hop up, you can yeah. Take a look at it real quick. Yeah, that thing was staring at me. That is a big bird. Through the window. Um, and they're the ones that like make the real loud knocking sound too. Like they do the real quick, like like drumming. They call it. Did it drive you crazy? Eventually? No, no. I thought it was it was cool. Like yeah. I would hear one drumming, mm -hmm. and I'd like run outside and be Wait, like, "Where's, where's he at?" at? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, we we get those around here every once in a while. Um, have you seen any uh, bald eagles by you? Yes, actually, we saw a bald eagle two weeks ago at work. Yeah, over there in Loveland. Yeah, yeah, those are cool too to see, like in the wild. They're huge. I know. They're I thought so it was big. a turkey vulture. And yeah, I was like, wait a second, that's a white head. That's an eagle. Holy yeah. cow! I'm like, there's an eagle. It was like cool. I'm like, are you guys anti-American? I know, right? <laughs> I know. I get super. I get like dumb excited about stuff I like do. that too. But we've had two. I don't know if it's the same. It might be the same one that I've seen twice. But I've had balloons again you'll see it when you watch it if you watch this back there's a setting on here when you do something with your hand all of a sudden balloons, balloons start right. going up they did it last time with jeff and i <laughs> forgot to turn it off before I anyways i've seen two and um one of them was on heart road like going out towards like Te texas eastern mm -hmm. um and uh it was uh we were driving to gymnastics and it was sitting in a tree right along the road Nice. And we were running late for gymnastics. I kind of regret not oh, like right. stopping and looking at it more and just being late to gymnastics. Right. Uh, but we like saw it and I was like, that's an eagle. And we like drove real slow underneath it. It was like right above us. And then the other time I was driving to church just a few weeks ago and it was on 48 sitting in a tree right next to 48. Wow. Like right before the Lebanon exit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you're headed south. And uh, uh, it was pretty cool. So yeah, I've been seeing them more and more. I knew that they were around the mainville morrow area for a while be like around the river river yep um and they have like a a nest that they have a camera on really it's down there yeah oh that's cool yeah you can it's um the little miami conservatory i, I think is who does it mm -hmm. little miami river like uh some group conservatory group or something that does it and um uh i watch that every once in a while there's like eggs in it right now oh that's pretty cool yeah See if we can find that eagle nest camera. Yeah, there it is. I don't know if this is live, but oh yeah, it says Saturday three sixteen. Yeah, so she's uh she's just sitting on some eggs right now. Date. That's a big day for me. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess the 16th. Yeah, that's today. It's 16th, that right? Today. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I mean, not like haha -ha funny, I guess, but just another, you know, synchronicity. Right. <clears throat> All right. Pause, bro. You're loud. So, um, so yeah, I like to check in on the. They think I'm dorks. My family does. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, we got we got to see what the Eagles are doing today, and they're like. Dad, can we watch something else? I'm right. like, guys, this is awesome. Like, right. how are you guys not this is so true entertainment? Yeah, I know. 
I'm a nerd like that too. It's okay. I appreciate it. Or maybe that shows our age too. Like all yeah. of a sudden, we're awesome. We're bird watchers. <laughs> oh no, I have I haven't looked at it in that light. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I don't have a book yet. I don't have right. like a bird watching book yet. So next thing you know, I'm gonna be looking at binoculars on yeah. <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> uh, reading reviews on binoculars. <laughs> I did see this one in uh, in uh, it was like an Instagram ad. Mm -hmm. It was like I don't know if it's real, but it was like you know developed by some Navy SEAL. Oh, of course. And it was right. like some like single thing that like you can zoom in like a hundred times or oh, something yeah. like that. Um. It was only like 30 or 40 bucks i was like mm, might try that out right be kind of cool because there are sometimes oh and you can hook up to your camera phone so really? like it had this attachment that it would like sit oh, you sit right here on your camera phone nice. and that way you could take pictures through the lens oh, like a hundred times zoomed in so i was like man if i see like an eagle at my house i'm totally right. i'd totally be like <laughs> all zooming in on it well, I mean, now that we're talking about it, our phone should pull up ads for it again. So maybe we oh, can buy that way. <laughs> that's true. The one time I'm glad you're listening. <laughs> right. <laughs> Show me the uh, the the scope. <clears throat> <sighs> well, what, anything else on your heart today, man, that you brought with you? Um, not really, man. Just, just hanging out. Just wanted to have some good conversation. I will share a couple of cool synchronicities and uh, something that's, I guess there, there is now that I think about it. Um, Brittany is singing at the church singing. Yeah. Dude, that's uh, cool. Yeah. So uh, we started going to Ben's church yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in September of last year. And um, it's awesome that she's doing it, but it's also very significant in her healing journey. Yeah. Um, so she faced some tragedy early on in her life that I, I, it's not my story to tell, so I sure. won't get too far into it. But it kind of stopped her from singing, and wow. singing is a passion of hers, and she's got a beautiful voice. I was gonna say she must be good. If she, yeah, she, when she sings, it's like it gives me chills, and not because she's my wife, but she's good. Yeah, you know, and she loves gospel music, and um, to see her stepping into this is, is really beautiful. Dude, so, that's awesome. Yeah, she she used to do it when she was young. She used to travel. She used to sing at church and travel and do shows. Wow, and um. Th this tragic event kind of took her away from it because it was it involved people that did music with her so i got you um it's just been beautiful to watch her um and in her journey with with this singing and how it's how i perceive it bringing forth healing you know wow. in her life so it's it's been really beautiful and dude that's cool yeah like not letting not letting it stifled the gift mm -hmm. you know that god gave her right so and then using it to glorify him you right. know like that's i love seeing that as a pastor man there's like i don't know if i could from a, from a ministry standpoint i don't know if there's something that gives me more like satisfaction i don't know what the right word is to describe it but but just like seeing people operating in the gifts mm -hmm that God's given them um, and seeing them do it with with joy and with gladness mm -hmm. and like as a pastor like that's like one of my favorite things to see is people stepping out and doing that because yeah. um, I, I preached one time a message about how um, uh, Satan doesn't his 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 tactics aren't always you know because for someone like me like he can't convince me he's come too late to convince me that uh, of the things that I know to be true. Right. Like he can't change my mind on those things. Mm -hmm. um, but what he can do is he can, he can maybe not directly, but things that he's done in the world over time, the things that, that he's uh, started in the way that the world sees things and, and um, like he's the father of lies. Mm -hmm. So while he may not be directly attacking me, he's the father, he fathered something along the way that has caused our society or our world to see things a certain way or, you know, whatever. Um, and so one of his tactics is to stifle people's gifts, mm -hmm. to lower their impact um, on other people. And so seeing someone like that, that was a work of the enemy, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that event was, that was a, 
that was absolutely the work of of sin and the enemy and and the curse it can go all the way back to 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 the original sin right right to where um of trying to stifle her gift you know yeah. and uh so to see someone step out and do that like That's as a beautiful. pastor man i just that gets me that gets me fired up you know i love i love that i love yeah. that because that's like that's like um just like kicking the satan in the face you know like right you know just like no not yeah, me it's, it's it's been it's been really beautiful and you know <clears throat> another thing another beautiful synchronicity from from church and since we've started going uh last year was a really difficult year for Brittany and i's marriage yeah um, lines of communication were were barely working if working at all and <clears throat> a lot of hardship a lot of uh self-inflicted events happened and um since we've been going to church and and really giving ourselves to our path with god <clears throat> excuse me we this year we made it a point like our new year's resolution like this year is about us our marriage and so February comes along and the celebration for um, the church, they do like a couple's night. Yeah. And we had a Las Vegas theme with Frank Sinatra music. Okay. And uh, kind of ironic Sin City, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of joked about that with our with our lead pastor. Like, yeah. Uh, Was Vegas here. the best one they do? Uh, <laughs> Sin City, huh? Isn't choice. there other places that Frank Sinatra played at? Right. <laughs> um, but for us, in our path, my wife and I's path, we got married in Vegas. And oh, okay. Fly Me to the Moon by Frank Sinatra was, was like your song. Moon. Yeah. So like here we are in January, like, okay, let's lean on God. Let's bring God to the forefront of our marriage so he can do stuff we haven't been able to do yeah. and tear down the walls that we haven't been able to tear down with with our egos and our resentment and all these things that we've built up over the years. Yeah. Of a, a decade of a relationship. And um so the a beautiful synchronicity for us was Vegas, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, Sinatra like, yeah. God's like, you're right where you need to be. You yeah. know? And that's just a month after we've declared, like, God, come into our our life and our marriage and, and do what we can. Yeah. So that was really, really beautiful. To well, and it's just like a little, like, <laughs> I see those things all the time, too, mm -hmm. where God just uses a little detail like that right. to be to show you that personally, like, yes, this is a marriage conference. That everybody's going to get something from right. this. But just so you know, just so you two know that I'm with you in this, like he brought that together just for you guys, right? You know, it's just little cool things like that are, are um, I just think they're indisputable. I don't, I don't think, the, uh, Amen. Yeah, right. you know, like I, I know there's, there's, there would be unbelievers or atheists that might watch this that think that's just coincidence stuff, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I just, I don't, I just think it's impossible. You know, I think it's right. impossible to have those specific of details. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think it's God's way of saying like, yeah, yeah. If you turn it over to me, I got you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And I was telling a guy at work the other day, he's kind of on the fence and, um, I'm like, you know, when people ask me why I know God is real or why I think God is real moments like that, indisputable, yeah. uh, that's a perfect word. Like, you know, I used to be the guy on the other side, like, oh, that's a coincidence. But yeah. when you open yourself up to the truth and, and God's truth, those things add up so it's no longer coincidence when right. you have every day little signs are showing you like hey i'm with you yeah continue on this path you're on the right path or hey maybe you should look this direction instead of walking that direction yeah um, those moments and those little synchronicities are like okay that's cool yeah well and i think it's i think what you pointed out too of, of opening yourself up to it yeah i think that's i think that is because that's a promise in god's word that when he says you diligently seek me mm -hmm. um and uh and you started when was that was that like has that been two years now or was that last summer or we're when I'm we started to, start doing bible studies yeah like when we started getting together was that i guess it's been about a year then maybe <clears throat> yeah um was it last summer that that we it's baptized in the yeah last july okay all right, so then yeah, so it's been it's been almost a year then. Yeah. Sometimes my timelines get mushed together, but um I know I lost my train of thought trying to think of what that was, but oh, because that was one of the things that you had talked about. I remember in the beginning when we first had conversations 
that's where I was going with it was that you started to diligently think what the truth was, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of stopped. Um, cause I think that's where sometimes people atheists or agnostics or, you know, whatever they want to label themselves. I think that's the problem when an atheist reads the Bible, if he's not reading it or he or she is not reading it, if they're just reading it to, to know the arguments mm -hmm. against it, right. Rather than really like, earnestly sincerely seeking the truth i think that's the difference yeah because there's a lot of atheists that know what the bible says but they don't know the bible or they don't know the context the or right. the message or you know what's going on because they're just reading the words they're not they're not really actually seeking right so when you say that you've opened yourself up to really seeking the truth that's when it actually was revealed to you right um so i, <laughs> I just always think that's a, a, a and especially too for me that was like watching your journey from the outside um, before we even talked, that was, uh, that was something that I noticed right away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, what showed me the door to finally reach out to you mm -hmm. and say, Hey man, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. Yeah. Um, Cause I think I told you that in the beginning, kind yeah, of those beginning nuances of, of watching you kind of like, post things and and you would post things about jesus and i'd be like man where is he getting that you know because because that's like the exact opposite of what i know jesus to be or or who he says he was um but i never felt that that uh that there was like like i would pray about it and be like should i reach out you know this or that and there were there may have been some that were like insecurities like holding me back like just out of like what if he thinks I'm weird or, you know, mm. whatever. Um, but, but I think there was also an element too, is that that time you were convinced of something else and you, you weren't like, I don't know, maybe you could speak on that. Like how, how different your mindset was where maybe you thought you were open to things, but you really weren't mm. yet. I don't know. That's just kind of like what my take is, I guess. <clears throat> right. Yeah, no, I would love to. So, um, growing up like a lot of people, as children, you have these experiences of the church or of going to church. Yeah. And for me, like, so I feel like a lot of childhood wounds of people that say they're righteous, but aren't really righteous. Yeah. Really rub youth the wrong way because it's, they're not actually living in God's truth. Yeah. They're, it's their own distorted egoic version of God's truth. Mm. And so as a young man, I was seeing, or as a young boy, not as a young man, I was seeing these people that were going to the church that we went to every Sunday. And um, they were also at my house on Friday nights getting drunk and doing stuff that wasn't so righteous. And I'm like, yeah. And, and then pre, it was more of a, like a fire and brimstone. If you do this, you're going straight to hell. And there was no, there was no word of God's grace. And I'm like, you know, it's just, I wasn't seeing the truth for what, the truth. I was seeing it through other people's lenses and, yeah. and that created a lot of resentment. And, um, you know, I saw the hypocrisy. I'm like, you know, I don't know if this is something I, I really care to be a part of. Right. And so I denied that part of my life for, you know, 33 years or 30 years, you know? And, um, so there was a lot of wounds, religious wounds in, in my early years. And then, like I said, when dad passed away, I started diving into meditation and breath work and all these different uh, modalities to, to really do in, inner work and uh, yeah. introspective work and really start asking the questions. And I developed a relationship with God, not through, you know, we've talked about this, yeah. like there were, mo there were, there was moments where God was illuminating my path, much like he has through coming to the church mm -hmm. where he was guiding me and even bringing me to the church was God, obviously, yeah. but like a conscious relationship with God brought me to the church. And so I would pray and I would meditate and I would just ask these questions like, God, you know, I would surrender. Yeah. I don't know. That is the biggest thing is like, if people could just say, I don't know, and then sit there quietly like the, the path is illuminated for you. Yeah. So that started early on and I, I studied different theologies, um, Islam, Buddhists, like Buddhism really resonated with me yeah. from an egoic standpoint, because it's like, they don't really believe in a Supreme creator. It's like 
all the inner worlds is what creates your outer worlds. Yeah. And that resonated with me because how I felt inside is how I viewed the world on the outside. Yeah. And I realized for 30 years I viewed the world negatively and that's because I was pessimistic and angry mm. and hadn't healed those wounds. Yeah. So Buddhism early on really resonated with me and it developed a foundation for me just sitting still. Okay. And it's like, okay, prayer is for me giving thanks and asking and the meditative part is the stillness to hear the answers mm. so the the buddhist foundation kind of set the groundwork for sitting still okay yeah that makes sense yeah so um going early on or uh, later on uh i think that this was about two years ago maybe a year and a half ago right before you and i started sitting down and this is what opened that door probably with god is like okay now he he's open to readdress these Christianity wounds and these this, these Christ wounds that he's carried because for so long, I believe Christ was just another man that had reached enlightenment, like right. the Buddha. You know, I, I believe that Christ was a Buddha that learned these modalities and ascended this realm yeah. in, into the heavens, you know, much like Buddha had and, and other masters. Had. Was that from other, like, writings? Like, are, is that, like, in the, in the Buddha culture i guess is that the right word in the buddha culture is that do they recognize jesus as a real person but they just all see him in that same way that you just described him as as um that he was an enlightened person not what the bible claims him to be correct okay and, and same with the uh, islam and the muslim people like he was a prophet yeah you know, a messenger of god uh and in christianity is the one that's like okay he is god in the flesh right um, and I wrestled with that for a long time and it was, and I'm understanding it was my ego. Like, well, if, mm. he, if Jesus can do it, I can do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that competitive yeah. edge. Like he was just a man. He's much more righteous and walked a pure path, you know, and then I would make excuses for myself. Well, it was a lot easier back then because there was no distractions. <laughs> right. I didn't have a smartphone in front of, you know, I would start to give myself outs of why I wasn't being Christ like. Yeah. And, um, so <clears throat> right before we met. I've always been one to think of triggers as a direction I need to go. Like if something triggers me in a negative way, mm -hmm. like that's probably something I should look at, like maybe an unhealed part of myself or something that doesn't yeah. resonate with me. Maybe I should see if there's truth in it for me. Yeah. And so somebody that had sat with in uh, medicine ceremonies. So uh, psychedelics were a huge part of me coming to my, my, current understanding it really psychedelics opened me up yeah if you will mm -hmm. and i've ha had some really profound experiences on psychedelics and somebody i had sat with and had kind of the same understanding started posting about jesus and those wounds started coming up i'm like what is this guy talking about yeah it started triggering me it started making me angry i'm like dude what are you doing like <laughs> this is it this is i a thought we were on the same page yeah bro what are, what <laughs> so <clears throat> he posted something about coming to Christ and he talked about new age spiritualism and, and shamanism. And I'm like, what happened to this guy? You know? Yeah. So that night in prayer, I'm like, you know, God, this is really triggering me. If, if Christ is more than an ascended master is, is what he was referred to in my old ideology. Mm. Um, show me, will you show me? It, that I'm missing the mark with Jesus. Like I, I believe mm. that he was a Buddha, an enlightened man to reach Nirvana. It, but if I'm off the mark, show me. So the next day I wake up and this is in prayer and meditation, completely silent. Like my phone didn't hear this. Yeah. My phone and on Facebook, I got added to a group and I was the only person in the group and the group was called uh, the kingdom. And I click on it and all the pictures of Christ is King, Christ is King. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. That it doesn't say who added you or some, some guy have no clue. Just, well, I mean, was I was like about a, to say just randomly, but it would seem like it was random based off of how you right. got in there. Right. Okay. Right. And so, uh, naysayers could be like, the oh, world yeah. would tell you it was random, I guess. Right. Yeah. But it, it was like, wow, that was quick. <laughs> that was a quick answer. Like it, you know, and, and so I was like, okay, I can't deny this. You know, I, I had, one thing that I always have had is like, if God shows you something, you walk that direction. You don't like, 
early on my ego would be like, nah, come on. You know, that naysayer in me would be like, yeah. no, maybe that's just your own distorted creation, you know? Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I started going down that path and addressing those wounds and really sitting with like, why, why is this, why does Jesus rub me such a, a wrong way? Yeah. And all those things from my childhood started coming up. And so couple weeks into that journey my mom had this 1950 king james bible that i showed you oh yeah, sitting yeah. in the garage She's like, was it like your grandpa's or something yeah or? it yeah. had been passed down through the family and um she was like do you want this i'm like okay you know the, of course of course she didn't know about my journey at the time yeah you know or the start of my journey back into the word of god and or not back into but into the word of god as a man right and um so it's like holy cow yeah of course i want this and it's really cool it's it's a learning bible and it's got all kinds of good information it's even got like the coinage they used back in mm -hmm. jesus's day i remember there being like a lot of pictures and stuff in it too i think yeah right like yeah yeah it was pretty cool so yeah and then you had reached out and just like one thing after, after the other yeah yeah it was, it was really beautiful so that was kind of a shortened version of my years of journeying to christ yeah well and i remember explaining to you that um that like christ wasn't his name right and that was like you know if people think like jesus christ they think like jesus is his first name and christ is his last name because you would use you would use christ in, in a lot of your previous posts mm -hmm. and um and that was something that always stood out to me i'm like i mean i don't know if he really understands like what that word where that word christ the comes from one, yeah yeah, yeah I do. um and then I remember, <clears throat> I remember there were so many times, and this is what, what from my perspective, what was cool about our interactions and how God was, was using me, was I remember that first conversation that we had, um, that first time we met in the coffee shop and going through that Bible and stuff and showing you some things in there. And I remember your eyes sometimes, like I would, I would tell you something, and it would be like all of a sudden it, would, it was like you something just hit you, on. yeah, and you'd be like. I've never heard that before. I've never mm -hmm. thought of it that way. And so moments like that from from not just a pastoral position, but just because we're all supposed to be ministers. Right. Um, and so just from from I just remember thinking, like, man, God, thank you for for that. Like those little moments of just seeing your eyes like receiving, mm -hmm. those moments were really cool for me on a personal level, too. Right. Um, and that was one of them, like, you know, you know, Christ wasn't his name. Christ literally is translated the anointing and the anointed one. And right. you were like, I remember you like you, sometimes you like your head would go a little bit sideways or something, you know, like, mm -hmm. wait, what? Like that wasn't my understanding before. Right. Um, so that's cool. Are there any other like that you can think of like major aha moments that you've had in the last so it's been almost so May, I think, was when I when we first met, if I'm remembering right. Um, or maybe it was April. So we're we're coming up on a year. Mm -hmm. So any other like huge aha moments that in regards to Jesus and <clears throat> yeah, actually, because <laughs> because there were times you would send me stuff even a lot even after I baptized you and stuff like you would send me something you'd be like hey what are your thoughts on this Resistance. and it was <laughs> yeah and it was still tied to that Buddha like stuff yeah you know? <clears throat> yeah so <laughs> there's still to this day resistance yeah if i'm being honest and uh just staying open has helped me continue to illuminate the path um but so we there was a men's worship night at church and i still fighting the resistance and, and oh yeah because worshiping jesus was a big thing right for you for a while yeah it's like you know it teaches us not like I felt like the word was teaching us not to worship a man, but here we are worshiping a man. Mm. So it's like that. I, I struggle with that. It's like, okay, understanding we didn't, we're not worshiping the man, but this, the spirit of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the divine aspect of Jesus, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And so I think it was November. Maybe we had a worship night and it was a men's night. And this is bringing the conversation kind of full circle too. Um, owls, owls are a huge, like in my path, 
um, owls have been a confirmation. Like when I hear an owl and I'm in like a contemplative state, like, so I like to meditate out by the fire at mm -hmm. night, out by, uh, out in the backyard by myself. I like to sit out there and, and meditate and just sit still with myself and, and nature. And, um, anytime I would hear the owl, it was like right in moments where I'm like seeking a path and the owl would, I would be like, and it like give me chills. And I'm like, okay, I'm on the right path. Yeah. You know? Okay. Like a confirmation, the way right. to confirm it. Right. And so fast forward to men's night, I'm in prayer and I'm just praying like, God, you know, continue to help me release these, these blockages of, of, of Jesus, you know, let me, let me really surrender these blockages. And we get to the venue and I walk in, the first thing I see on the mantle of this place is two big white owls, like <laughs> ornamental owls. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, something's something's coming my way. Right. And at the end of it, you know, we prayed over a couple people that were going through struggles. And there's like 70 men in this in this uh worship night. And uh so we we pray over these men, and then the pastor's like, you know. I just feel like if there's anybody in here that is struggling to to have a relationship with Jesus or that maybe there's somebody in here that knows a lot about Jesus but doesn't know Jesus and I'm like oh, <laughs> oh, okay he's talking to me yeah you know if if anybody's out there that needs us to to pray over them and help usher in that relationship with Jesus then um raise your hand and so i reluctantly raised my hand and i just started crying and sobbing and just felt so much weight release from me so yeah yeah it's a, you know it's a work in progress i i still i still have resistance and i'm not sure why but yeah i also know that i will continue to stay open and, and seek god's truth in it and, you know. yeah i mean i i agree that there's there's um, there's so much in God's word that, that, cause there's like still things that are revealed to me, you know, even now. Right. And, and I'm, I'm probably almost, well, yeah, probably like 10 years really into my, um, strongest time of my life of, of being, you know, in God's word and, and actually like studying it and, um, and really, being involved in um you know our church and just just the life and overall in general i guess and there's still even after 10 years like there's still things like i still have those moments where i'm like oh my goodness like there's so much in here right um so yeah so god's constantly kind of chiseling at us mm. you know um i mean i don't think there's anything that i would say that i'm resistant towards um I, I can't think of it in the in that way, I guess. But I mean, we're all different in the way that right. he's chiseling us, you know. Right. Because there's probably are things that. Well, I guess. No, I guess that's not true. I mean, I guess I could probably like there might be aspects that, um, that maybe I believe. Mm -hmm. Like, there's like a difference. This might sound weird. I don't know how to explain it. But like, there's a there's a part where you believe. But then there's also a time when you become fully convinced, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, okay, I believe this, but then there's the, um, like our, what I would, cause remember that, how I described our, uh, spirit, soul and body. Mm -hmm. I remember that being one of those moments where you like your head went sideways a little bit, Yeah. <laughs> how I, how I talked about being a, a created spirit that's eternal we have a soul, which is our, which I described as our mind, will, and our emotions, and we live in a body. So our spirit is what, be, is what becomes reborn when we receive Jesus. That's the eternal part of us. But our soul is what is the resistance sometimes. And our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions has to come into alignment with our, our spirit. And so there's times when that's difficult and that's what takes time is, um, and that, that's what, um, I think it's, James or Peter that talks about um, uh, the engrafted word um, being to save your soul. Mm -hmm. And so some people think of that as 
like what I think a long time like what you eternal did. part of yeah. yourself. Yeah. Um, but really it's talking about our our what I would call our soulish man. And that's what, you know, the more that we're in the word, the more it starts changing our mind and our will and our emotions about things. And that's like what chisels away at us. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think there's probably a lot of people, and I guess even including myself, that there is still resistant towards some things, mm -hmm. even though we say, okay, yeah, I see that in the word. I get it. It's been revealed to us. I believe it. But then there might be some time that it takes before we become fully convinced of that, right. of that certain thing. Yeah. So it's a, it's a slow process, you know, I, it can be, yeah. <clears throat> so, but it can also be a really quick process because when you went from that first meeting to being baptized, like that seemed like it was like, yeah, you know, that was because you, all of a sudden you were like messages are rolling in, you know, Hey, I just, this and that. And, and then all of a sudden you're giving me the message like, Hey, I'm, I'm ready to be baptized. And I'm like, Whoa, like, <laughs> this is awesome. Like, right. You know? Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, so it, it's kind of, um, it can be slow. Sometimes it can, it's really whatever we open ourselves up. Right. To, yeah. Right. Well, however we allow the flow to be, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm at the point of, I know just because God's shown me, but there's still that, that egoic or soul resistance and habits and um, patterns that I've developed over my life that it's going to take some chiseling away. Yeah. You know, um, lineage things that have been passed through my lineage mm -hmm. you know alcoholism that's a huge one you know there's still people in my family that struggle with alcoholism yeah i don't i wouldn't say that i ever struggled but i it was a part of my life you know and you and i've talked about it it's such a huge part of our culture yeah i, I didn't drink at home by myself but if there's a social event you better believe i was drinking at least 10 beers oh wow you know yeah and, and it, I had that high school boy mentality. Like if I'm drinking, I'm, I'm drinking until I, I go to sleep. Yeah. You know, there's no like sipping beers, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, and that's how I live most of my life. It's not just with alcohol. It's like, if I'm doing something, I'm, full, I'm going full in. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's been a blessing and it's also been of detriment to me, it, depending on what, what that is that I'm diving into. Mm. Um, but that's something that's taken a while, you know, and, and, God has forced my hand a couple times with the with the drinking. Luckily, mm. I've never had a DUI or um well, I wouldn't I've hurt people in my life because mm. of alcohol. You know, I've hurt relationships in my life because I've like I've because of times when you were under the influence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, that was something that even as a child, you know, with my mom and dad, my dad would go out in the yard and drink beer and my mom would blame everything on the alcohol and mm. i'm like my, my dad is a great man he's out there he goes to work all day and then he comes home drinks some beer and works in the yard and makes our home look beautiful like what's wrong with that like yeah the demonizing of my dad and blaming it on the alcohol it was like well nobody's gonna tell me i can't drink because i'm still a good man yeah you know so it's mm. like distorted like not making connections of, right yeah. yeah distorted views of of childhood and, and things like that really take that's what takes the chiseling mm. it's like unprogramming the 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 deceiver's program that he's given you your whole life it's like oh alcohol is not bad yeah it's people's judgment of it that's bad it's like oh shit yeah <laughs> okay that's not why i'm making all these bad decisions it's not other people it's the alcohol so yeah uh, just programs like that um in our society where flesh sells you know lust right. is a huge one for men and yeah something i've struggled with my my biological father was a womanizer um there are other people in my family men in my family that are, are womanizers and um you know so lust is something i've struggled with yeah i've never been unfaithful but it, it says right in the bible if you're right eye, <laughs> you pluck right. it out right so it's like, ah, you know, working on that and really purifying my thoughts when I see attractive women. Right. Um, well, because that's the thing, as Jesus pointed out, uh, that it's not just the way we act mm -hmm. that violates those things, mm -hmm. right? You know, and he said, if I mean, he even pointed out, if you <laughs> if you even look at a at a woman in a lustful way, it's just as if you slept with her, right? Right. So, because like, in Jesus, your mind, you might be <laughs> right, because Jesus. So Jesus set a standard pretty high. Mm -hmm you know, to, to let us know that, um, cause that was, that was the thing of that time was 
you know, the law was very action specific, mm -hmm. right? Like do this, don't do that. And that was the only way to like what you called the path to righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. To be righteous, you had to do this and you had to not do these things. Right. Um, but then Jesus comes along and that's why that's a lot of reasons why um why he was hated so much is because he kind of pointed out like no and he's calling them hypocrites and mm -hmm. you know brood of vipers and you know right because they're like wait a minute no 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 i don't do this and i do this exactly what the law says right and he's like well i law. tell you <laughs> that you know if you even look at a woman you've done it in your heart you've slept with her in your heart and that was like whoa mm. you know like wait a minute our whole you know heritage has been you know about this law um and jesus came in and, and just kind of like threw it through a loop in it right mm. or threw a wrench in it i guess hold us <laughs> to a higher standard right. right but then when you make those revelations then all of a sudden you're looking at yourself like oh man i'm horrible <laughs> <laughs> you know for for me i'm a perfectionist so that like coming to this path and, and really trying to develop a relationship with God and, and Jesus, it triggers that perfectionism. It's like, well, I can't like, it starts to purify those things yeah. and, and trigger that. Like, well, nobody's perfect. It's like, yeah, but you're not even trying. Yeah. You're not even trying. You're just like chalking it up as I'm not, nobody's perfect. Like, right. It kind of gets you, used as an excuse at that it's point. A, it's a, it's the best out people have. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. Well, yeah, but you're not even trying right. to, to purify. Yeah. And, and it's hard. Right. And that's that's the that's the good news that Jesus brought mm -hmm. too was um is we don't have to earn our way to righteousness because it's impossible for us to. Mm -hmm. Because that standard that he points out that that we can violate um and we can sin just in our inner thoughts and in our heart, um, that's an impossible not that we shouldn't strive mm -hmm. you know but it's it's we we could never because of the way of like you said perfect right mm -hmm. when we compare perfect what god is perfection um it, it's it's a standard that there's no way we could earn our way to righteousness so that was why jesus was necessary so that he could give us his righteousness right and make us to be righteous is what the word says we've been made righteous and that's different than earning when you're made into something that's different than earning your way to it. But at the same time, so there's grace there to be imperfect, but at the same time, there's also, we still, like you said, it's still important to hold ourselves accountable and still strive to, um, to be holy just as he is holy. Um, so anyways, I, I think sometimes like what you said, there's, that can turn into the to hell and brimstone message though right right that you heard as a kid mm -hmm. if it when there's no like you said there's no grace involved in there because there is grace but at the same time the other side of the ditch is you know well there's there's grace so you know it's okay I, nobody's perfect like that's the other side of well no that's not, <laughs> that's not the right way to look at it right either. so it's like conscious sinning <clears throat> yeah it's like okay i know these things are a sin i'm going to do them anyways because jesus laid that ground so i could yeah like what how does that work yeah you know if you're consciously sinning with in, in disregard because of the path that was laid down through jesus it's like where do those people stand it's like are they still saved with with that relationship or is that i guess that's an unhealthy relationship with jesus if you're like well you did all the work so i'm gonna do whatever i want <laughs> yeah you know that's that's one of the questions that i always sit with and have it's like where well, so conscious thing come. Yeah. So from my perspective, I think those people are still saved. Um, because the word talks about one unforgivable sin, which is uh basically not believing on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um now the word says blaspheming the Holy Ghost, I think is how how it words it. And some people focus on that as the unforgivable sin, meaning if you blaspheme then you do it once and there's no way that you'll ever be forgiven of it well that i don't think that's true jesus it, it really boils down to it's unforgivable if you stay that way jesus brought forgiveness for everyone no matter what really is how i see it um and so when anybody believes on jesus um that's how they're made righteous 
And when you're made into something, sin doesn't cause you to be unmade that. Now, you can you can take it off. Like if someone that believed in Jesus says, you know what, this stuff is all crazy. Jesus was not the son of God. He didn't die and he wasn't raised again. That's just a bunch of hoopla. Okay, now you're unsaved because you've... you've Turned your back. Right, you've turned right. your back on it. That's the unforgivable sin. Um, uh, and, and there's other parts too where it talks about um, where it uses sin singular you know, that, that Jesus came for the sin of the world. Um, uh, I can't remember all the, the exact words or the exact references, but, but there's, when it talks about that, it uses sin, sin singular and that being the only sin that uh, is, is basically just not believing on Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's the only sin that's not forgivable. So people that sin consciously, I, I still put that in the realm of they're human, mm -hmm. right? Their, their perspective is skewed. Their um, the world is still having uh, influence on them. A world that is cursed is still having influence on them. A world that has been uh, for centuries, you know, being set up by the enemy to to view things a certain way, to affect cultures in a certain way. That's how I see that kind of stuff in in human behavior, um, and that's exactly the story of the gospel. Is Jesus? Um, we're graced because you know we have grace through Jesus in 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 those mindsets. Um, so now there's probably a lot of people that would disagree with me on that. Yeah, I struggle with that, <laughs> and I I yeah I, I don't know. I think I think con maybe you don't know Jesus if you're consciously sinning. Well, there's some people like that say that. Like I've had people tell <laughs> me like, um, you know, well I don't even think he's saved because of the way he's acting. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they're like, well, because, you know, the word talks about that, that you're supposed to be transformed, right? And you are. Um, but but there's, um, there's a constant of renewing of the mind, mm -hmm. right? Like we've talked about. So if you are someone that's not constantly renewing their mind, they're going to still act a certain way because they don't know what they don't know. Now, from a worldly standpoint in the natural, there's going to be consequences for that kind of behavior, right? If you are constantly in sin, you're constantly bringing yourself into curse, even though you've been redeemed from the curse, you're constantly putting, it's like, um, it's like you've been washed clean of mud, but then you keep rolling around in it, right? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you're constantly rolling around in the mud, then you're going to constantly be covered by it, right? Right. Um, so, but that's the difference between your eternal spirit and your soul though, right? Like your soul and there's things that are going to be happening. You know, you're going to be, uh, you, you don't get to experience the joy of the Lord when you're constantly covered in mud because you're not allowing it to manifest out of you. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. So if you're focused on the spirit and you're in harmony with the spirit, then joy is going to just manifest out of you. It's like a, it's like a, a default of the Holy Spirit. Um, but if you're constantly rolling in mud at the same time, how can you how can you enjoy these other things? Fruits, right. You know, the fruits of these things because um, because that's the fruit that you're gonna get. Rolling in mud is gonna bring around dirt. Mm -hmm. Um and so there's gonna be natural <laughs> consequences to that. But from an eternal standpoint, that's how I see it. Is yeah. your spirit is reborn, it's eternal at that point um that's what is saved then you there's a separate part then that saves your soul mm -hmm. um that uh that the word will will clean up your soul part of you because mm -hmm. the word says once and for all it says by one sacrifice once and for all he has forever perfected them that believe did i just quote that correctly i think um so that's talking about your spirit and um and it's talking of you know and the word talks about your spirit being dead and being made alive the, your king james would say quickened <laughs> he says the the king james version would say it's your your spirit's been quickened made alive anyways i'm starting to ramble but no no um, that's good that's good uh but that's how i see it that's good is that's... there's still a lot of soul things that we have to clean up mm -hmm. so because i see it as we're we are always 
consciously sinning, I guess. Like, um, now my consciously sinning might look way different than someone that hasn't been in the word and hasn't allowed the word to clean them, clean their souls up more. Mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that I still don't consciously sin. And then maybe because I'm open to the Holy Spirit, though, the Holy Spirit corrects me and says, Hey, whoa, bro. Yeah, right. that's that's you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm like, ah, you're right, Lord. You're right. Thank you, Jesus. Like I'm and you know, and then I try to and then I renew my mind to that, whatever that new thing is. Revelation, right. Um, so but you have to be open to that process. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that affects salvation because that means to me that that uh dampens what Jesus did on the cross. Like yeah. it it kind of takes the power out. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. That that makes sense. Like Jesus can't go to the cross again. <clears throat> right. He doesn't have to. Like that's what it says. Like he for, forever perfected it. Mm -hmm. Um, so if if that can't happen again, then then me sinning, whether it's conscious or not, and it's only conscious because or, or the way that you described it is only that way, like I said, because they haven't been in the word to allow it to renew their mind to things. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's not something that's going to keep them from, from heaven, though. Suffer the consequences here. They're going to be, their life's going to be in shambles, probably. Right. I see what you're saying. Um, like they're not free of, of, of the life consequences that come with that. Cause I mean, if you're rolling around in curse, you're going to get curse outcomes. Right. Like that's, there's truth in that for yeah. sure. Um, that's good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you for that. I know. Sometimes I get in a ramble. So hopefully that, hopefully that made sense to everybody listening. <laughs> no, that was good, man. That was really good. That's exactly what I needed. Yeah. Uh, that. So I, I still, uh, the soul and spirit thing, still l learning, the differences. Yeah. So that that was really good uh, on a couple of levels. Um, and you said something about the bearer of fruit. Another cool synchronicity, kind of unrelated to what we're talking about the other day. Uh, so I. <clears throat> I've had a little bit of a struggle with keeping a positive attitude at work. And it's something mm. that I, that I constantly work on, you know, and when, when things and, and stumbling blocks come my way to try to stay, um, stay above the, the mud, yeah, if you will, and not dive into the mud with the rest of the disgruntled people around you. Yeah. And, Cause that can uh, be hard when everyone's complaining and yeah. And you know, <laughs> things aren't going the way you perceive them right to, to that they should be going the way you think they should be going but uh the other day i really made a conscious effort and i was i was look listening to 93 7 listening to gospel songs like really talking to god because i work by myself i, I work out mm. outside and so it, it's me my thoughts and my conversations with god and so i was like god you know really help me Help me move past these blockages and these things that are giving me a negative mindset and you know really trying to be positive saying my affirmations like i am open and positive like really trying to coach myself through some of these negative thoughts and one of the customers that i interacted with his name was edward and i saw he was a veteran um, from his license plate and he came out and he started speaking with me and i shook his hand he said his name was edward and i'm like oh that's my name too and I said thank you for your service i serve is that well. your first name or middle it, name it's or? my middle name oh, okay and so and he was like you know what edward means and i'm like no you know he said it's the bearer of the fruits of the spirit and it, it was the story doesn't do the connection justice if you know what i mean like yeah the handshake and just like the presence of this other individual was like god in, in his flesh like you're doing a good job like remember who you are don't get in the mud yeah. Like, so that was another cool synchronicity with the the bearer of the fruits of the spirit yeah that's cool yeah because i just because i had been making such a conscious effort to to lean on god in that in the situation standing next to the mud where i could easily jump in and, and roll around with with everybody else so. yeah yeah for sure yeah the fruit of the spirit is something that we have to allow <laughs> to manifest yeah. you know it's a fruit of the spirit not a fruit of us right but we have to we have to let it manifest mm -hmm. Cause we can, it's like, um, maybe like, you know, like a candle or, or something and you put the lid over it and the lid over it and flame. like, yeah, so we can do that mm -hmm. and sin can do we that. Do yeah. We do it a lot. Yeah. And so that's, that's an important part of, um, not that, not that, uh, not that the light ever goes out, you know, within us, 
but we can certainly, you know, confine it. Right. Um, and that was one thing, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, you don't take a, a light and, you know, cover it up. Um, you shouldn't do that. But that's why it's important to renew our mind to how we operate. And, and um, um, there's so many facets to it. I could probably go on a long time about it. But um, it, it's a realization that because what you probably, the way that you looked at it through a, a Buddhist mindset mm -hmm. is um certain ways that you have to act the way that i would view it through who i know now that jesus has made me to be that now it's just being mm -hmm. not acting just being being who i'm created to be being who jesus has made me to be um and that takes a lot of the pressure off of having to be perfect right uh because because there's like a different connection when you think like oh i have to act this way now our actions are connected to how we be right but it's more it's more it's just a change a slight change though in the way that you see it as um a righteous person doesn't act that way a righteous person acts this way so i'm just going to and i'm made righteous so i'm just going to be righteous mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah yeah so to me, that was a, when that was taught to me, mm -hmm. um, that was a huge shift in my overall like viewpoint of, um, like, I guess a, a, an easy example would be driving. Like I don't leave the house when I should probably <laughs> most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then I get behind somebody that doesn't go as fast as I want them to be, go. <laughs> right and my blood pressure instantly starts to go up so when i was first on like this kind of journey i would like you know i would still be like you said certain way on sunday morning and um but then if the person in front of me was going too slow like i might be cussing them out you know or wanting to flip them the bird or something like that um and uh and there was this realization one day the holy spirit um just yanked the slack out of me one one morning mm -hmm. and was like you have no idea what that person in that car is right. going through you have no idea what their morning's been like you could have left 10 minutes <laughs> earlier and this wouldn't have been an issue at all and you wouldn't even be behind this person probably and i'm like oh man holy spirit you're right you know and and, and also that thing about our you know even though i don't actually flip them off or i don't really do any like i'm not going to ram into the back of them or Your do some crazy road are, right? right internally i'm <laughs> i'm violating it just like jesus said right he said if you're angry with someone uh unjustly it's like you murdered them and i'm like man i'm murdering every one of these people <laughs> in my mind right, right. <laughs> um so that was just something as simple as driving that was causing me angst uh and so then the renewal process for me was like, okay, a righteous person wouldn't do, wouldn't say that about that other person, wouldn't do that to another person. So I've been made righteous, so I'm just going to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Now, it took some time where I'd have to be like, I would just like clinch my steering wheel still. I am righteous. I am righteous. Yeah. And it, well, it was more like, <laughs> Jesus loves you. Get to where you're going safely. You know, and I would just like, <laughs> like, you know, stuff like that. Jesus like, does. I don't. Get yeah. out of my way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I'd have to, I had to like really, but then over time as I, I really, again, one of those things where you believe something, but you're not fully convinced of it. Mm -hmm. As I became fully convinced as he chiseled that out of me, now my, my drives are a lot more relaxed, peaceful, my, a lot more peaceful. Cause now I'm manifesting, I'm letting man peace manifest out of me. Mm -hmm. Um, and now, you know, like I get behind somebody, um, like sometimes when I'm going to the gym, I literally am like four minutes from the gym in the morning. I coach um, at a gym near in town here and uh, uh, it, it, in the, the first class, 530 a.m. class. And um, so it, like at 5, 520 or whatever it is that I'm going there, it's like four minutes. It takes like four minutes to get here, here to there. Right. Every once in a while, someone pulls out on Monroe Road <laughs> and will decide to go 25 you know, and instead of a, not even 35, the 35 is the speed limit. They're going 25 <laughs> at, at five something in the morning down Monroe Road, which is only going to cost me like probably like two extra minutes overall, right? right? 
but because I leave at 525, <laughs> the class starts at 530. Yeah. <laughs> so, but in my mind, like, I'm like, Hey, this is, this is your fault. Not your theirs. Consequence, right? Yeah. Like it, it's like this, um, this realization of the accountability that I have in, in, in all aspects of my life. Right. Even when something happens outside of my control, I still just view what my part in the accountability is of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's, that's like how you respond to it. Yeah. And so then that affects my response. Right. Um, so now I'm just like, okay, like I'm not going to ride their bumper, you know, I'm going to back off a little bit. Like, like, yeah, like this is, you know, an extra minute or two, whatever, like, you know, you should have left three minutes earlier. 520. Yeah, exactly. So, um, (laughs) So it's just like little simple things like that, that the fruit, then I allow the fruit of the spirit. Now the fruit of the spirit can flow out of me now because I've taken away some of those uh, stifling barriers. So hopefully that, all that makes sense. But um, well, I don't know how you're on time. We're an hour and 20 minutes in. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I have an alarm set for 1130. I don't know if we got another hour in us. But okay. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, if I'm you're good. I'm him till noon. So. Okay. Yeah, we can just hang out. Um, even if we uh, don't have anything else to talk about, like you're welcome to hang out here until, until you know, you got to get to to lunch. Um, but uh, so one one thing you said about uh, seeing it in a, a Buddhist mindset and then just being that kind of coincides. And, and something that I've come to understand is there's a sprinkle of truth in a lot of theologies mm-hmm. because it's. Buddhist is talk, talks about just being, mm. being peace, being love. Like those are all things that resonate throughout God's word. Yeah. You know, so, so I've, I've learned in the study of different theologies that they're all connected. They're all connected, you, you know, and it, for me, it's like, which, which verbiage, which box do you want to put God's word into mm. God's creation? You know, and I think that's something as humans, we compartmentalize. Well, to me that to me that just confirms that they it all originated from the same source, right? Yeah, for you sure. Know? So, like, I because I think sometimes you know maybe a, an atheist or or somebody would use that as a as a way to just show that um, that the only reason that there is a god that exists is because all these cultures created it, mm-hmm. like, and. Um, and I don't, I, I, to me, it's the opposite to me. It's just proof, more proof, mm-hmm. you know, because of the similarities, uh, that they all originated from the same source. It just things got distorted over time Yeah, through man. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so I don't know. And, and, and I guess like when we talk about Jesus, to me, there's, um, enough proof that you have to settle two things about Jesus. I apologize. You were going somewhere. No, no, I feel ahead. like I interrupted you, but no, you're good. Bro. Um, you have to settle two things about Jesus in that either he is who he says that he was, or he was a complete lunatic. Mm-hmm. Like, I think those are the only two conclusions that you can come to about Jesus. And, um, and then if you, if you say that he's a complete lunatic, well, then what, what is it about him that makes it, makes him a loony bin? right um and if that doesn't make sense if if you look at his actions well like i don't know what 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 kind of lunatic would would die for other people that would always put other people before him that like that seems like the kind of lunatic that i'd want to be i guess like um and then you also have to look at all of the what the disciples what his disciples wrote about how and the ending that they all came to except for one you'd have to think that they were all lunatics too. Right. So Even bigger lunatics to follow a lunatic. to begin I, with. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the only two conclusions that you can come through that. So when you look at these other theologies, to me, that's, that's, that's the measuring stick, I guess that I use for like the Buddhist and Islam and all these things. And when you think of someone like Muhammad, what were the other actions we know about Muhammad that um, would have us, come to those two things either he was a real prophet from god or he was a lunatic like how do we how do we make those um and i, I guess i've never really studied a lot about muhammad but 
I would um, probably lean more towards the the latter. Well, yeah, I, I mean, he had a, <laughs> he had a nine year old wife. Um, yeah, I mean, and in certain cultures, marrying children is a normal thing, but right? By any standard of of human psychology, right? <laughs> but culture doesn't equal righteousness. That's yeah, and, that's right? exactly what I'm saying. Like, because yeah, that, there's <laughs> things that point that people point out about the Bible that people did in the Bible that's just just documented that they did. It right. doesn't mean that God signed off on it, right? You know, I think that that's a a lot of what people get hung up on. Yeah, and I I, I think if we labels are so limiting, and if we strip the walls of of the labels of different religions mm -hmm. at the at the forefront of God's message for humanity is unconditional love, mm -hmm. and you find unconditional love in, in a lot of theologies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that is what Jesus embodied. That was God's, like, blueprint. Like, Jesus, I am Jesus in the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. And so embodying that unconditional love is, like, the blueprint for all of us to right. follow. Yeah, you know? I'm going to show like you what form. this looks like. Right, yeah. exactly. So I, I think we get so caught up in, in labels and, and put up walls because your label doesn't match my label. But yeah. ultimately unconditionally loving yourself and God and, and your neighbor. I mean, that's, that's being in God's word. I yeah. feel like so. Yeah, I see that. I think we get caught up in, in labels and, and all the other BS of our mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're not separate. We just need to unconditionally love each other. So for sure. Hmm. Yeah. Things would, uh... <laughs> that's the thing is the, the, the template that God has laid out in his word if we followed that template, like, I mean, that's, that's what heaven looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, um, so I, I saw an interesting perspective the other day on the old Testament. Somebody called it the murder manual of God. Yeah. Have you heard that? I've never heard it that specific, but I know that, that atheists, um, they really, I mean, they, they think of all kinds of things about the old Testament, mm -hmm. you know, I, like Richard Dawkins, uh, I think that's his name. He's a pretty famous atheist that that describes, um, you know, the Old Testament or the God of the Old Testament as misogynistic, and you know, he, he has this whole like negative, all these negative uh, words that he uses to describe God. So I, I I don't know that I've heard that one specifically, but um, anyways, I'll let you finish that. Well, no, I I just wanted to bring it up because I was like the murder manual of God. That's kind of brutal yeah <laughs> you know um you know with the flood and everything maybe there is like okay maybe there's a little bit of truth in it maybe not i wouldn't call it the murder manual yeah um i don't know i just thought well, that was interesting and someone I to run someone brought as somebody yeah someone brought that up to me one time about the and used the word murder mm -hmm. and you know and they said god murdered i can't remember the earth <laughs> yeah and i don't well i don't remember if it was you or if it was this there's another guy that that messages me every once in a while um that is a an atheist i think and he used the word murder and so i said all right well let's make sure that anytime we use a word i always want to make sure that we understand understand the meaning or we're on the same page of what we think the word means um and murder is talking about it, it is focused on the unjust Just. killing yeah right right mm -hmm. and so people that view the old testament that way they don't have an understanding of justice from a spiritual standpoint right. and looking at it from God is perfect. He's the measuring stick of perfection and anything less than perfect compared to that, like that has to be judged. And so, um, so that's a hard thing for people to swallow in understanding what judgment of sin looks like mm -hmm. when compared to perfection. And if there's anything that's less than perfect, it can't be in the presence of perfect. Like it's just, even if we think of that as like, um, even when I try to think of it like on a like a physics level, right? Like a scientific, like how my natural brain can understand perfection and what, like it just, it's like it can't even exist. Not unperfection can't even exist. That pure light absorbs, right? Well, I think it kind of like wipes it out, right? Like it, it like it, it can't even pureness just kind of just makes everything else pure. I guess. Right. So, right. But it just destroys, it. but it, but it kind of is in a destructive way, I guess is how I see it. Like, um, I don't know how to explain it 
what I'm what I'm trying to to see it. But regardless of that part, I guess. But that's what people have such a hard time understanding in the Old Testament is all of those things God did justly. Mm-hmm. Now it it seems um because we're looking at it from a view of what our justice Human, system right. is, right? Like what we see is justified. And uh, and that's hard for us to, uh, it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, understanding that, that, that all sin is to be judged. And well, and it just kind of just points to the, the purpose and necessity of, of what Jesus did on the cross and what that means for us. Um, and him being made to be sin so that we could be made to be righteous. Um, and, uh, where was I going with this? Um, oh, but so the old Testament then, so I don't see it as the murder manual. Like, right. yes, there were, God judged things that resulted in death. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and, but the word says that that is a consequence of sin. Mm-hmm. Like, Death is this consequence of sin. And they're already spiritually dead, right? Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because they didn't. Sense. Now, now there may be, now you may say like, well, what all those, will all those people be held accountable eternally? I mean, that's a different. Individual level. Question. Right. Of, of how that looked because there was a, <clears throat> the word describes a holding place mm-hmm. for like Abraham and all these, you know, people that were um, in this holding place that uh, that were basically waiting for Jesus. And so when Jesus died, it says that he led captivity captive. He pulled them out with him. Like, so when he died and went to hell and came back, defeated, you know, basically in, in victory, you know, said like, okay, hell's not my holding place. Um, uh, he brought, he, he brought those, those people in that kind of holding place it kind of talks about it as the um, I think it's referred to as the upper upper shield. I think um, I feel like I, I maybe I sent you something about it before. I can't remember exactly, but um, so I don't know. I don't know the question about the eternity of the people that all right. died in the flood. Um, maybe somebody does. Maybe somebody would say that, like, yeah, eternally they were they are separated from God just like anybody else, but um, because they were judged in their wickedness. Um, because Noah was the only one that was recognized as righteous. Um, the New Testament refers to Noah as the preacher of righteousness. So I think he was trying to get people right. while he's building the ark, and they're probably calling him crazy, and he's trying to tell them, like, hey, no, this is the righteous way. Like, you better, this is your chance, you know. Right. Um, but they were the only, you know, him, and then his, his you know, family, because of him, his family then, uh, which I didn't ever even thought about that. Like Noah being a picture of Jesus, mm-hmm. right? Like his family got to partake of his righteousness because mm-hmm. it didn't say his sons were righteous or their wives were righteous. Right. It said that Noah was righteous. Mm-hmm. Um, I just made that realization just now, you know, being a picture. I knew the ark was kind of a picture of Jesus being the one door. And, but, uh, but yeah, even Noah's family got to partake of his righteousness just as we get to partake of Jesus's righteousness. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I don't see it as murder in the Old Testament. Um, now there are th- there are times when people are murdered in the Old Testament, but not by God. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. Abel was murdered <clears throat> by his brother. That was the first We've one we ever recorded. Actually. Um, Do you remember that conversation we had about Cain and Abel? A little bit, yeah. What, so, so like, what what I struggled to understand was they both offered the fruits of their labor. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, and we talked about and God rejected one but accepted the other. And yeah. So I, I I struggle with that. Yeah, I think it was uh it was about um Cain's heart behind the offering. Right. And was it the first fruits? Was it the best fruit? Or did he just gather up what was left on the ground that he wasn't going to eat anyways? Mm-hmm. You know, and and so then um um I mean it but says it, it a little not- bit. It wasn't real specific in the word, though, and that's what I struggled with. I think it. that's what we kept going on. You were like, "Well, how do you know that?" And I was right. like, "I thought there was um, maybe it's the maybe it's the King James version that's not thorough in explaining." But it, it well, and I think there's other references in the word that talks about Cain and Abel's offering. That's that's maybe what I'm missing. Okay, yeah, that's probably what I'm missing too. Um, is the 
cross references because it says he uh, he worked of the ground and he brought the fruits of the ground to God and then he was rejected. I oh yeah, so that's that's, that's one thing that we. It, but. I think that was one thing that. So I was reading it as uh, Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground, so like and so I read that as like he was just picking up the leftover fruit off the ground and you were like well that doesn't necessarily he mean says he that. tends the land though so yeah. if he's growing food from the ground so yeah it could just be the way that it was worded yeah um to not mean that but i th i think there's a cross reference that explains their offerings but i just don't i can't think of it off the top of my head um i'm looking at other fruit of the ground <laughs> fruit of the ground From the fruit of the ground yeah the, it all just kind of words it that way yeah well it's like a, as a parent and as a child like if me and my brother brought both of our efforts to my father and my father rejected me like that's almost like the father setting me up to be resentful and and negative you know what i mean yeah so just little nuances like that in in scripture make you question like well what you know what what is the true motive like if they were both bringing their their efforts to God and right. one's rejected, like, well, like God is setting one up for failure, bro. <laughs> well, and that's I mean, why I think that that it's to me that's why it's clear of what Cain's heart was behind the offering right. versus what Abel's because Abel's it does specify that he brought the first firstborn of his of flock. Way, right. So to me, that there's like if we read those two verses together in totality and seeing the situation and then god liked abel's but not cain's yeah i think and then even cain's response also reveals his heart behind the offering too maybe you know where he gets um, maybe his heart was pure and then he got jaded because god rejected yeah i mean i guess that's Rejection possible jades but, us you know? um yeah it says he was it describes him as very angry and his countenance fell he looked sad and depressed which i guess that's normal human that would reaction. be normal <laughs> But it says, it, uh, the Amplified says, exceedingly angry and indignant. Um, the King James says, very wroth. So I wish I'd, I knew more that I could tell you the or, or what may, I'm thinking of, that there is a cross-reference that talks about their yeah, probably. their offerings more in Was detail. Like but 63,000 cross-references or something <laughs> yeah, crazy. I don't have, know. have you seen that? Arc oh, yeah, thing? I've seen that arcing thing. That thing is cool, like where all these things are connected. Yeah, I saw that first. Yeah, that's and Jordan, wild. Jordan Peterson showed that. And he, yeah. He does deep dive into some of the books of the Bible. Exodus is one of the ones I really like. Oh, wow. Is he a believer? Like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know that I ever knew that. He, he approaches it from a psychological standpoint and crawl, okay. like really – dives into the cross references and like the archetypal stories of, mm. of how they play out in our con in our own psychology and consciousness like the, the hero's journey if you will how it plays yeah. out in the individual lives and whatnot yeah well and that's the thing about people calling it a murder manual is they're not they're not looking at it from a from a overhead seeing it all how it all works together right they're only seeing it like maybe even section by section or something or event by event piece by piece. they're not they're not seeing how all of it is connected and how all of it then is centered on jesus mm -hmm. um and that's why i would say things like like when you would you know point something out to me or you know what do you think about this or or even before we talked in some of your posts like that's why because because i'm like having seen that aerial view of it and not even in totality like there's even things that i still haven't you know it's not like i'm an expert on it or anything right. <laughs> but like seeing it in a way that now i'm fully convinced of it and so like when i see things that are written about jesus and i'm like that is like a hundred percent the exact opposite mm -hmm. of of what this actually is um that's why I, that's why i would just i'd be like no that's impossible <laughs> like it's impossible for me yeah. to see it that way do you remember anything specific like things that you posted about mm -hmm just about the christ consciousness a lot of those types of posts and seeing um and seeing christ as um as uh, an enlightened um I said master, master or whatever right. yeah right uh so a lot of that kind of stuff you know and and i just be like no that is not <clears throat> i don't know where that understanding comes from you know like and it's like i don't obviously i don't think those people are reading the bible or studying it in a way to um because that's the thing is like, how can you believe that Jesus is a real person? 
that was that was what always got me too is how can you believe that Jesus was a real person and have these views about Jesus that are the exact opposite of what I know to be true about Jesus like I don't know where that comes from and and, and saying the exact opposite of Jesus and, and understand I don't I'm not sure I'm connecting because I um so I can't think of any specific post I guess okay. that I'm like I can't remember right this this like specifics of the post that um yeah I don't know I guess I can't help you <laughs> figure Connect. out why where I'm where that's coming from but yeah um or explain it differently I guess without a specific example so unfortunately sorry that's okay <laughs> uh, I read an interesting book and it it's it's really neat to see how uh, at least in this perspective it's called god man mm -hmm. the word made flesh it talks about the biological processes of our body and and obtaining enlightenment through a process and using the star uh, astrology mm -hmm. you know like the bible says the stars will be your signs mm -hmm. um it's a really interesting book but it talks about our brain secreting um a chrism uh, an oil down our spine 33 vertebrae jesus was 33 when he was crucified mm. it, it goes it, there's a deep biological process that's also like so for me and, and what i believe is things play out in all realms so like the spiritual realm the physical realm the mental realm all those realms the the physical biological realm i feel like all those there's the same truth permeates through all of it okay so like the i'll have to send it to you it's a really deep but it talks about the chrism going down to the sacral chakra the energy center mm -hmm. the sacred place and then rising back up and so other cultures kundalini energy um the male and female energy it, it's it's deep okay i'll have to send you some stuff on it yeah it's a lot to explain here um but it, it's a cool book because it kind of ties the story of christ into the biological process of reaching enlightenment through um, this oil mm -hmm. the anointed one the christ oil and it ties into the bible and it ties into uh you know he jacob wrestled with god in the the land of pineal the pineal gland and the land of milk and honey uh milk being serotonin honey being the dmt the the spirit molecule it, it's deep okay. I'll, I'll send you some yeah. information on it well, I mean, I'm 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 rolling with you so far. The only thing that, um, I guess stands out to me is about becoming enlightened, mm -hmm. like because that's kind of the goal of the Buddhist, right? Am I, I understanding mean, that essentially? Correctly? Yeah. So I guess that's what um, <clears throat> I guess that's what I would say. Part of the the spe the specific examples of what's opposite of what Jesus is, um is not recognizing who he truly is mm -hmm. and being um, god in the flesh and um like because that was that was some of what i saw was there was a lack of recognition in that that jesus was only a man and then connecting him to this enlightenment you know as a man and to me that's the the exact opposite of what he was saying he was pointing out who he was the whole time um and then it culminated into uh you know the end part where he ascended you know the end of the the uh, gospels were his ascension and and proving that he was who he said he was like that was the the final kind of uh proof for the people that he had been with all this time mm -hmm. um so i guess when you say things like like enlightenment and become like those things are are I guess triggers for me right right when you say things like that because i'm like eh, wait but, a minute but like, i don't i don't think reaching enlightenment and maybe it's the differing understandings of enlightenment so you talked about getting an understanding of the word we're using like murder right enlightenment is just coming to the god realization that that there is an infinite creator okay and so that's to me what enlightenment is, is okay realizing that you have a god-given ability or fruits mm -hmm. of the spirit and to live at that highest version of yourself and have that god realization okay. to me that's enlightenment 
but the so but the buddhist then would <clears throat> would say that that um where so from my standpoint as a christian i think that it, that it all of that comes because of the connection with jesus mm -hmm. where the buddhist would would not see it that way correct right okay Cor correct. that's where we kind of like start to split i guess maybe well that so they just don't recognize jesus as god in the flesh okay so like he was uh, a man that ascended himself to divinity right is that yeah explaining it okay yeah i think the um i think that's kind of how the mormons see it too yeah um i think the mormon religion um if i'm remembering correctly i think that's similar to how they view jesus they view jesus was a man that earned his way to divinity mm -hmm. um and so then it creates this really that that's my my issue with with buddhism as i think it creates a works towards righteousness like mindset like yeah. where you work your way to be righteous rather than recognizing through jesus you're made righteous so then that's kind of what i was saying is the difference in actions like acting a certain way to get to righteousness versus just being righteous because that's who you've been made to be like i think like the buddhists <clears throat> have it like flipped see but but you could also make you could also make the argument that even in in god's word jesus says what it says what 87 88 times pick up your cross and follow me yeah that's an action right that's acting mm -hmm. you can't just be because it says worship me and you will be that way right you have to act you have yeah, to you, pick up your exactly cross. yeah i agree with that 100 percent. so that's action that's acting on being righteous right but but i have a different starting point than i think the buddhist does though oh yeah certainly that's what i'm yeah, saying yeah. is i'm starting from a place of righteousness and my <clears throat> actions should follow because of that right because i'm understanding oh i've been made righteous and a righteous this is how a person righteous person acts so i'm just going to be righteous mm -hmm. and then my actions follow that should right they should, should right so um where that's why i was saying i think the buddhist has it flipped where the buddhist is working to become righteous mm -hmm. where i've already been made righteous in jesus and so my actions now because of that realization and because of of constantly renewing my mind mm -hmm. so i'm still putting in the same work that the buddhist is doing mm -hmm. but i'm doing it from a different starting point where the buddhist is trying to get to the to the finish line yeah and i'm starting from the from the buddhist's finish line i guess if that makes sense uh, it makes sense, but I don't think that's correct because you wouldn't have those temptations if you're at the finish line of the Buddhist because they don't have the temptation of sin. A Buddhist doesn't? No, it, people that truly follow? I mean, I don't know. I don't know any Buddhists that, I mean, that I think that's like sit the, in solitude in the Himalayan mountains. Well, that's and, what I mean <laughs> is they, they're constantly trying to remove them, remove the temptations from their life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like the whole well, purpose of being... The, escape the the reincarnation cycle essentially is what they're trying to do to a sense. Oh, what's that? So the reincarnation cycle. So Buddhists believe in karma. Uh huh. So like your actions equal and opposite re like every action has a consequence. It's like the universal laws. So if you create karma in this world, you have to reincarnate to deal with that karma. And so escaping uh -huh. the reincarnation cycle is separating yourself from the world. And going into so that, uh, the God realization yeah. wow. and connecting with God in the flesh while you're in the flesh and not creating karma. So like karma is not always a bad thing. Good karma is, yeah. is karma okay. as well. So like having children, being married, creating relationships, that's all karma that you have to continue to come back and reincarnate to address. Yeah. So that's why you see monks retreat into the Himalayan mountains so they're not creating karma so they can ascend and wow get, and exit this fleshly reincarnation cycle wow that makes me even more sad for the for the buddhists i feel like you think so what what i mean what discipline though I, i'm not defending i'm just well but that's I'm just for the sake of conversation yeah, yeah no i get it both sides um <clears throat> it seems like I don't know it just seems like a very sad life yeah but you look at jesus's path he went and separated himself for 40 days out in the desert and that's when he was yeah he I, there's face to face with the devil and also yeah. connected to god like right there's something to separating yourself at times like you know fasting and 
like there's something too fasting, right? Yeah, when we absolutely. when we remove that connection, it's human of our desire to eat, to eat right? right? Right. Um, I can see there being things about that, but 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 it's that mm. it's that works mindset, almost like on steroids for a monk. But they're not working. They're they're sitting still with God. But it but it's constant no work action. though. There's no action. They're they're sitting there still. But that's but that takes work <laughs> to get still though, right? For us, sure, sure, certainly. But that's what I'm saying is they're constantly working at stillness. Like it's a constant state of stillness, or, or a constant state of working to stillness, or a constant state of stillness. Maybe you said it right the first time. I mean, I guess it's just hard for me to see that that wouldn't take because that's like the whole point of 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 a monastery and because you're removing all of these things that would be um like you said distractions or temptations or whatever but that seems like a constant process to 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 do that right um and that's why that's why they seclude themselves mm -hmm. because it, because it is a constant thing like it requires seclusion right and to me that's why it's so sad is to me it's like it just seems like a sad life to be secluded your whole but life. But they're at peace though. That's the thing. They're at peace because they're connected directly to the source. I don't know if they are. Why else would somebody go spend their whole life in the mountains by themselves? <laughs> because of what you just said, they they think that they that's what's required for them to be able to ascend. I I see I see your point. I see your point like so they yeah so i don't know i mean other than i guess talking to an actual monk i don't know and have a lie detector test on it. <laughs> like i don't know how i could actually judge if they're truly at peace or not but to me you that, feel it in their presence i feel like maybe you can feel people's energy if you're if you're in tune I yeah like maybe it just i guess it just it just seems like a really yeah i don't know like to not have connections with anybody mm -hmm. um but if you're connected directly to God, then what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess why would you need connections if you're connected to God? But right. um, I just don't think that that's what God intended, though. Yeah. I, I don't think he, and I think that's what what is so beautiful about Jesus and giving us a connection to God that doesn't require that type of work. Right. And that's why I call it work, because it seems like it's a constant state that requires you to be secluded that requires you to not have any family that requires you to you know live in this certain specific way to be able to have that connection with god that's a constant state of work in my mind well so is being a christian in that in that definition that you just said it's a well, constant state of work to not to, to be have, connected to god eh, not to be connected to him not to be connected wrong choice of words yeah but there, there's work that's involved in our soul part of us, like we talked about before. Um, you know, rolling around in the mud, if we use that as an example, like it, there's work that's involved in cleaning that mud off of you, right? And putting something, filling in the hole that where all the mud is. Like, or, or just retreating away from the mud. So the mud's not a temptation. There's probably some things you do just have to cut out of your life, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but I don't think the other... Because I think other human connections that we have, like those are also um, ways that we are connected with God. Glimpses of God in action. Yeah. 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 And but to if me, you're connected to the source, you don't need glimpses of God in action. Yeah. I don't think it's about, <laughs> I don't think it's about needing it. Yeah. I think it's like that God wants us to enjoy that. Right. Um, so that's what, that's why it just seems like a sad life to me. And maybe yeah. that's just a perspective of someone that, <clears throat> has a lot of human connections that i can't imagine not right and a lot of being connected human comforts people. well that that's a separate thing too right. like yeah. it's not so much the um because to me the, the the connection to people is what's probably <laughs> more important than like this house and the ac or the heat that's running Amen. right now yeah, yeah you know absolutely. like that's i've i've discovered that that's just stuff a long time ago right. like i mean i'm i'm glad i have it i'm glad that i don't have to be in a place like Shokan Peach with no AC ever, right. um, you know, to not get any relief, uh, <laughs> you know, because they're, I mean, some, you know, when it gets uh, in the hot season, it's in the triple digits and, right. you know, 90% humidity. Humid. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> it's, 
like oh my goodness yeah, yeah that would be uh that'd be rough and covered in mosquitoes all kinds of stuff so um so yeah i'm glad i don't want to deal with that kind of stuff but i know that i would probably be okay if i did you know because of your connection with god right like because of you know i know what's important my connection to god and connection to um uh having a love connection a loving connection with with the people around me yeah um and so that's why i just can't imagine like just being like i just don't think that that's how god designed it to be like the suffering he, and denying the flesh that's exactly the path christ walked really if you think about it no because he had friends me. he had friends he had and relationships I, talk, I guess i'm speaking more so in the end of times where he he was you know so a, a big part of buddhism is they the suffering yeah like going through suffering to reach nirvana or enlightenment or to reach god okay but but that's to me that's not what jesus did that so we don't have to right and to me that's the other that's another there's so many beautiful aspects of the gospel to me that's another aspect of it is that jesus suffered so that i don't have to that i can go through life um not that i won't experience strife and you know he said you know there'll be tribulations in life mm -hmm. but he said have courage because i've overcome the world he said you'll have tribulations in this world but have courage i've overcome it so um i can approach like not that i'll never have suffering in life mm -hmm. but because of that connection now that i have with god through jesus what he what he reestablished for me um is i can approach any situation and still have joy in the situation still right. have peace in the situation right. still have love in the situation um still have all these things that are the fruit of the spirit that have been made available to me and um and so i think that you know adam adam wasn't meant to be alone like he even god even said it's not good for him to be alone mm -hmm. so i i that's why i don't think that what a i think a, the beauty is just it's that's they've good. got distorted in um because they're disconnected from G, through because they don't believe that jesus is god in the flesh they can't get that connection now they're yearning for the connection that i already have yeah they're yearning absolutely. for that con because they have glimpses of it right you even talked about having those moments with god before you realized you know who jesus was mm -hmm. and and believed on him you had these connections with god so they've had these glimpses of him and so now they're yearning for that connection and so now because of that now they're they're willing to go through this life being secluded and and separating themselves from the world and and all of these things because they yearn for that connection but that's why i feel like it's so sad because i'm like you can have that connection without going through all that yeah if it's connection they seek or maybe i don't know peace i i don't know any yeah. monks that have secluded themselves obviously yeah um so it, it's it's i guess it's from just an ignorant point that i, I in a generalized right in you a know, generalized, generalized sense, sense. Sure. um <clears throat> so yeah um I don't know if there's any monks out there that happen to stumble across this video <laughs> <laughs> that want to come to Lebanon, Ohio, or or because uh, I don't know, if, I don't know if you, I don't even know, do they even, they don't mess with technology at all, right? Uh, I, I believe so. I mean, they're like Shaolin monks and stuff. Post their videos of their. Oh, okay. Their, so maybe there's different types of monks. There it are. seems like there are. So they're also like different levels. Like okay. obviously, if you're living in the monastery as a student, you're at the beginner levels of, of becoming a monk. Yeah. And you're not ready to separate yourself from, you know, those are, those are the masters. Yeah. Know. I gotcha. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. Yeah. That just seems like a, a, to me, based off of what I've read in the word and my understanding of, you know, of one of, of one of the aspects of why Jesus uh, was necessary and why Jesus was always a part of God's plan for us. Yeah, that's the only conclusion I can come to is that just seems like a sad way to go through life. And I don't think that that's how God intended us to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but like you said, there are connections because of the of the starting point, I believe, is the same for all of these other religions that have um, splintered off into these different you know whether it's whether it's because of a demonic uh uh intentions you know like maybe there was like 
demonic influence that intentionally was trying to deceive people. Um, that's where I think some of these other gods have developed. Um, that thing you sent me that one time about the Sumerian, was that you that sent me the thing about the Sumerian and how the, you know, this article was, was trying to say that all of the religions came from that one. No, I don't, I don't see it that way. I think my understanding of, of the beginning of what G, of what Genesis lays out to me, it's perfectly makes perfect sense as to how all these different theologies splintered off from what was the true God. Yeah. Some um, of them predate those, the Genesis story though. Well, predate, that's another area that, that we would probably have to, because I don't know more about, <laughs> I, well, I just, I don't trust <clears throat> dating methods, I guess. So you don't think there's cultures out there that were 30,000 years old that they're discovering still? No. I, or I should say it what, this way. I should say that I'm not, I don't, I don't trust the evidence that claims that they're 30,000 years old. So like Maybe I should say civilizations. Yeah. Like I, being... like there would be ancient civilizations, but I would say that, um, after the tower of Babel, it makes perfect sense that there would be other civilizations that would develop all over the world. I mean, that's what happened at the tower of Babel. It explains, you know, all of their languages got confused and then they, they all separated, you know, and that was what 6,000 years ago. What, how far does that? So that was that? after the flood. So that would have so... been probably Four, yeah, four, four, four to five thousand years, yeah, something like that. Um, so, so there are even like Gobe Gobekli Tepe and stuff like that. The civilizations that carbon date back thirty thousand, fifty thousand years, yeah, and even further back. But that's the that thing is, I don't discovering not that those civilizations didn't exist. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I'm questioning the, the science of the of the carbon dating, um, and I am not an expert to be able to explain yeah, the discrepancies of it. I've read about the discrepancies from other experts that are doctorate level geologists and all these things. And so their arguments against it make sense to me. Okay. I guess I could, that's the best way that I could probably lay it oh, that's out. Good. Um, Cause like, I, like anybody that would be curious about it, go read those sources. Don't <laughs> right. like, read I'm all not here sources. to try to convince you because right. I don't, I can't understand all the ins and outs of it enough. Right. Um, but I, I guess the generalized thing is that is that they're based off of guesses, kind of. It's kind of like the whole, you know, how climate change models, mm -hmm. right? Like that's that's an issue for me too. Like, wait, we use models to try to predict things. Like, well, it's pattern then, recognition. We use that as humans in everything. It's just pattern recognition. Oh well, yeah. So some of that might be true, but there are. The thing about the the carbon dating too is there are factors that can't be accounted for. Um, so uh, I can't remember specifically with the carbon dating, but but there's also the because there's two different types of dating methods, right? There's the the radio. Oh heck, I don't know the radio metric dating. Am I saying that right? I, don't know. I could be saying that completely wrong, but <clears throat> but there's something about like like the amount of um, I think the, the radiation that that uh, comes out of rocks or something like that i I'd have to it's been so long since i've read about was this that stuff. from like sun exposure or what like the time of the exposed under yeah the sun? i don't remember i'm i'm bringing it up probably and i'm not prepared to so i probably right. shouldn't but because well, i'm probably just gonna sound like an idiot but um because i read about it years and years ago and then because i became kind of convinced based off their arguments i became convinced that there was enough to question it um that i was just kind of like okay like i don't need to like i'm not trying to be an expert on carbon dating or right. radiometric <laughs> right. dating or whatever the differences are <clears throat> um so there could be some you know clown out there that'd be like oh you're not saying it right like yeah you're probably right i'm not saying it right but i i know the general i generally right. i know that there are factors that they can't account for because you can't measure something that they claim what happened a million years ago right you know, like that's, that's like, how do you, how do you come up with the past based off of a very small amount that you have in front of you, right? right to observe. Um, so anyway, so the, so these ancient cultures, like, yeah, like they developed after the tower of Babel is what I would say. And that to me, that makes perfect sense after the flood. Um, you know, these other cultures developed, these other ancient worlds developed and, um, and, you know, people, people would probably say, well, how did they develop that quickly? Then, well, I don't, I mean, my goodness, if you look at just 200 years 
of what this country looked like 200 years ago right i mean my goodness the the amount of uh like it, it doesn't take cultures that long i don't think to to be able to develop as quickly it, it wouldn't need to take thirty thousand years for a culture to to develop technology to develop. And, yeah right not technology like we have today i mean right but, their, their own technologies yeah yeah their own uh big cities and so you know like visiting chichen itza uh the mayan city um and those pyramids and all those things like um i don't i don't think it's uh i mean they're amazing feats but i don't um i know that some people like think that like humans couldn't have built that and stuff and i'm like oh, i don't know i think they could have mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, or, anyways or that's... what if, what if it was the nephilim what if it was the giants that built the pyramids and stuff like that yeah i, I know the i haven't read the nephilim um that much mm -hmm. um i know that i guess the book of enoch mm -hmm. talks more about them i haven't read the book of enoch yet um i've started to look into it and research where it came from when it was written um so it was actually my understanding is it was written later yeah um <laughs> like even after jesus um i think i'm remembering that right um so th i have some like okay like that doesn't that like the accuracy of it i guess and the um authenticity of it mm -hmm. are still a question for me so but i mean the the bible talks about the nephilim and talks and, about enoch um and mentions you know mentions the uh um i think they call them the, the um that was before the flood so it would be uh with the watchers or um <clears throat> so there and and you know there's there's men like goliath that, that even was, was you know giant, even right? closer to us you know in in the in history um you know described him as 10 feet tall mm -hmm. you know like right so yeah there could have been really large humans that that were a part of that um no it's after the genealogy here six yeah the wickedness uh when men began the daughters were born of them the sons of god saw the daughters see for me the book oh, of enoch has that. quite a few cross references with the actual canonized scripture so in the in some of the oldest forms of christianity like the ethiopian bible they recognize the book of enoch yeah i've heard that chris so told it's me like that some of the chris chris who chris g i don't know if he wants me to say his name on here but oh okay i'm sorry i um you know you know you know him oh yeah yeah, yeah. i got you yeah he he's about. he's uh which i'm gonna read I'm going to read it because you're going to come to church. He, he told me, he was like, if you read the book of Enoch, I'll come to church. And I'm like, all right, dude, uh, you bet. <laughs> uh, I love Chris. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's he's told me some about, uh, he told me about the the Ethiopian Bible and how mm -hmm. they they recognize the book of Enoch. And, um, and that's kind of what I've been diving into first before I read it is, um, is why where did it come canonized? from? Yeah. Like, and you know, why wasn't, why wasn't it canonized? When was it discovered? You know all these things um uh yeah those are those are questions that i have like um about it mm -hmm. because because he claims he's like he's like if if the book of enoch is true it changes everything about the bible and i'm like well eh. then that would make me i don't know that would i'd be like eh. because the bible just you talk about synchro synchronicity mm -hmm. i mean to me the bible just it's full of them yeah like it just I, synchronizes perfectly together. i think it just amplifies i think it's just a piece of the missing truth for, mm. for me and and understanding the book of enoch it, it's really a lot of it has to do with enoch's walk with god and what he sees in the different realms of heaven yeah so i mean yeah you could dismiss it as like oh this is an elaborate thought process of of somebody that's trying to characterize something humans can't understand mm. But at the same time with the cross references and the way i think it is just a, a missing piece of a grander truth and i don't think it changes everything but i think it illuminates a lot more than than we understand now. yeah okay you know? i just like with things like the book of mormon um <clears throat> the book of mormon they so if there's any mormons that listen to this you can feel free to correct me in the comments but my understanding is that 
they call the Book of Mormon the um like the completed gospel of Jesus. Okay. And when they say that, it makes me th then obviously there's there's the immediate um like what they're what they're not saying is that the gospel that we do have is incomplete. Right. Right. Like they're saying it by not saying it, I guess. By saying it that way, that they're saying that the the gospel that we do have is incomplete and i don't see how it could possibly be incomplete like there's literally a beginning and an end to it <laughs> like yeah. it's pretty clear that it, it goes through the story well if it's not telling the, the history, whole story I guess. well the story but can have a middle uh beginning and end and leave out important details well but see that's a complete story that's what i guess what they're they're saying is is that what we see as the end him ascending mm -hmm. and then and then the church starting from there is that that's not the end actually that is the middle so what they have what apparently was revealed to joseph smith in these forms of these tablets mm -hmm. uh that god led him to and you know and then he also saw jesus god and moses i think or i can't remember who who revealed themselves to him in the woods apparently um supposedly uh but then the, this is like this is the real ending of the story you know and it's it's jesus after the work after i think yeah i think i'm remembering this right um, after the second coming no not after the second coming but like his ascension like he he also revealed himself to this other civilization of people after his death and resurrection i believe so I think he died, was raised again, ascended, and then revealed himself. And then the, the book of the Mor book of Mormon is about this this revelation of Jesus in this other civilization that there's What's no the other. Well, there's no other that I know of. There's no other history that like it's some ancient civilization that there's no other documentation that, that ever existed that supposedly was here in North America. Oh, really? Yeah, like you know, and maybe that's what became Native Americans and that, that we know of you know when we first when the europeans first came to to north america mm -hmm. um whatever that civilization that the book of mormon talks about then i guess became the different native american tribes mm -hmm. that are here i guess or I, but they don't really follow the the jesus got like storyline well they yeah. do they 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 look at so they they have the bible they have the new testament they have the old testament new testament just like you know christianity does they have the christian bible is this mormons or the mormons like, okay i was talking oh what were you saying what was i was like the indian tribes like the civilization if oh saying yeah jesus revealed himself to the native americans yeah and maybe i'm not remembering it exactly right but i'm pretty sure that that's my understanding <laughs> is that it was whatever these ancient civilizations that lived here in north america okay and that that what happened was is jerusalem and the israelites were no longer the the chosen people that this that <sighs> this north american yeah like that like it was now. like that was like the new promised land something along that lines mm -hmm. i think um again correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but but that's my very generalized understanding and of remembering it um i've got a book that's about the the world religions mm -hmm. um it's been many many years since i've read it so i'm trying to like i haven't brushed up on it in a long time but yeah um and i don't even remember how i brought up the mormons anyways what were we i got off track there a little bit i think but, I, I don't recall where it started but <laughs> but it was talking about the book of Enoch. oh the book similarities of, of the, right, right. so that's what it was so this book of mormon then when i hear something like the book of enoch like i'm instantly like you said like maybe triggered might be the right word i don't know or at least like mm, like i don't know about that like i'm gonna be more um uh I have to take a deep dive into it, right. I guess, before I can but, really have any commentary open on, on that it. Dive. I'm open and trust that God will guide you to the the truth. Okay, I, I feel like yeah, that's, I'm open to that. Yeah, I feel like that's a for me in my struggle with Christianity and and is the the closed mindedness mm -hmm. that I really struggle with that because yes, God gives His word, but there's there's a lot to life like there we can't possibly understand everything so if like if you're diving into a specific topic like the book of enoch just being open to it 
And I feel like, at least in my past experience, a lot of Christians are so closed off to anything outside of the Bible. They don't even give the totality of God's creation a chance. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I guess I could see that a little bit because um, the only thing is, is I'm also aware and mindful of the um that satan's constantly trying to deceive us and um by any means necessary and so i'm mindful of that because i think that from what i know of the book of mormon and mormonism in general like i think that's a great deception um i think they because of um Oh yeah, we made it to eleven thirty. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, because of the uh, oh yeah, we're two minutes and twenty minutes, two hours and twenty minutes. All right, nice. So we got to wrap up, but um, so I'm mindful. I think that's a great deception mm-hmm. because of their not seeing Jesus as they might see Jesus as the, they might call him the Son of God, but they don't see him as my understanding is they don't see him as God in the flesh. That he was a man that earned his way to divinity, and so they believe they can do the same thing. And it completely, to me, it changes the true gospel of being made righteous, and yeah. and so to me, that's a great deception. Exactly, and what that's in Satan Buddhism, did, right? The stuff. What's that? That's exactly what Lucifer did, right? He wanted to be like God, exactly, turn his way to be like God, right? I see. I see what you're saying. And so that's that's why I call it like the 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 Buddhist and and that that take on it too. That's why it was so sad to me because I see that as a great deception. And so if if Satan's the father of lies, I see his work in all of these other things, right? And all of these other ideologies and religions. Um, and so then that's why I'm kind of like, is the book of Enoch something that's trying to deceive people? Mm-hmm. Um, now, I don't know because I haven't read it. Right. So I don't know, you know, these other things, I have somewhat of a basic knowledge of it that makes me think, oh yeah, no, I don't want anything to do with that. So I might get like three chapters into it. Or I don't know how long it is. And I might be like, because right, it's like some of those things that you send had sent me in the past. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, I would get to a certain point, and I'm like, okay, I don't even need to read this anymore. Because, like, not that I was closed minded to it, but I I had read enough to understand. You see the deception. Yes, right. that was that was that was in it. Um, so maybe I'll reach that with the Book of Enoch. I don't know. Um, there's enough people that probably want to talk about it that I probably just need to to read it so that I can actually give some commentary on it but um and maybe that'll be the next time you come back we can <laughs> yeah we can talk i know chris will be excited that the book of enoch i would like to get into like the lost time in jesus's life mm. um the, lost the, time or the undocumented undocumented time? Time. okay it's lost to us okay the the understand like from like because like the one we have the one part about him being 12 right when he was studying and then basically what happened until he was 30 his ministry yeah yeah um, I mean, I think he was in rabbi school. Yeah. That'll just be my quick take on it right now as we close up. But um, I, I got some other theories. I have no clue. Obviously, I'm I'm ignorant to the situation. But they're fun conversation to have, nevertheless. All right. Next time, we'll uh, Book of Enoch will be on the list. Next time, uh, Jesus's life after twelve from twelve to thirty will be on right. the next one. <laughs> uh, what was the other thing? I feel like there was one other thing that we talked about. Or I was like, I'll have to. Oh, out and then, like, what happened at lunch? What happens at lunch today? Oh yeah, boom. that'll be the. Uh, we'll have Part some two. three things to to talk about in those episodes. So, all right, well, dude, this was fun. Awesome, um, I love it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, thank you again for being here, and I hope that that you're uh, happy with the time that you gave us from your family and stuff this morning. So, no, they're probably still laying around, and I'm a morning person. They're not. They like to sleep in, so this works yeah. out perfectly. Awesome, dude. Yep. I appreciate All right. having me. Well, that's our two cents. So, bye boy. I haven't found a good way to end it yet. I don't know how to I don't know how to end it yet other than just saying bye bye. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars.